All right. So let's just look at some bullet points and then we're going to go to the press conferences. We'll do bullet points, map, press conferences. Idaho missing persons, clearinghouse endangered missing. This was shared in the beginning of the case, of course. Michael Joseph Vaughn, last contact, 07 27 2021, age five. Male, white, three foot seven, 50 pounds, blonde hair, blue eyes. Last seen wearing a light blue Minecraft shirt and black boxer briefs uh, with a lime with lime green stitching, with size 11 flip-flop sandals. Last seen around Southwest 9th Street in Fruitland, Idaho. This photo was taken one month prior to last seen date. If you have any information concerning Michael, please contact Fruitland Police Department Dispatch at 208-642-6006, or you can email tips to findmichael at fruitland.org. So the police have said that based on a credible tip, it is what has led them to go to this house, which is only... Uh, one mile away, even less than a mile away from Michael's house. And they are busy excavating in the backyard. Yes. Uh, yeah, Michael Vaughn missing since 2021. Okay, you remember it now. All right. So we continue to look here. Some bullet points. Michael went missing on Tuesday, July 27, 2021 in Fruitland, Idaho. He was five years old at the time, three foot seven, 40 to 50 pounds with blue eyes and blonde hair. He went missing just three days after his birthday. He was last seen around Southwest 9th and Arizona Street, wearing a light blue Minecraft shirt, black spandex boxer briefs with a lime green trim and a lime green Minecraft character with blue flip-flops. You saw the picture of the shirt earlier. He went missing between 6.40 p.m. and 7 p.m. That's the window in which police have narrowed down when he went missing. Michael's dad was in the back room with Michael's sister. He was ordering a pizza, and when he went back out, Michael was gone. Police were notified at 7.21 p.m. that same day that Michael was missing. His mom is Brandy Neal, and his dad is Tyler Vaughn, and sister is Aria. And a press conference was held. We're going to go over all of them, July, August, November, and this year as well. Then at one of the press conferences, so I'm just giving you guys a, a quick overview and a, a recap for those of you who know about it, an overview for those who don't. They released this image at one of the press conferences saying, the man seen walking through the area of the splash pad of Crestview Park leading up to the time of Michael's disappearance. He has not come forward. He has not been identified. So the man is described as a white male adult, late 20s, early 30s, seen wearing black shorts, a white t-shirt with cut off sleeves, dark colored shoes, and a hat. So I need to make it perfectly clear that he's not a suspect, but we need to talk to him so we can determine his whereabouts to see if he witnessed anything that would be helpful in this investigation. So what they did was, of course, look at all the cameras in the neighborhood, um, look at all the tips that they received, and slowly but surely, they methodically, they being the police, work through all these tips, releasing images like this. This man is still yet to be identified and see if he knows anything. But, you know, when people say, oh, we saw this car, and then they zone in on that, and they're like, okay, okay, so it's this guy, and then they vet that guy. They saw a jogger, they found the jogger, they interviewed him, they cleared him as well. So, right, thank you so much for joining Membership True Crime with Eve. Really appreciate it. All right, so if I do it like this again. So I hope this is a good overview for you guys. Just hold on one second, let's look at some more. So on Saturday, um, November 12th, police swarmed a home just four minutes from Michael's home and they started digging in the backyard. They had a tractor, they say dumpster and a lot of officials. Crime scene tape was put around the home and police have asked people to please stay away. At the scene, Fruitland Police Chief J.D. Huff told KTBB that the couple living in the home. Now, the couple, the pic people pictured at the bottom, the lady there is not related to this at all. It was just it's a picture that's being shared on the news. I'm very careful to share pictures. We do not know any involvement of these people. I'm going to tell you who they are in a minute. Um, but anyway, they say that um, the couple living in the home, the guy on the right is one of the guys that's um, living in the home. And at this time, police are unaware of any connection between them and the Vaughn. So there is no amount of involvement at this point with the guy on the right and his wife, which the lady on the left is not anything to do with this, okay? So just so if you see all these pictures going around and lots of posts about them, we don't know yet. Um, you know, all we know is that they rent the home. We know that the guy's name is Stacy, and he's been in custody since May of 2022, and his wife, Sarah, has been in custody since November 11th, 2022. So that's interesting, but we don't know anything more than that. All we know is that they rent the home where they're searching at the, and that they're searching in the backyard. 
So they say a credible tip led police to this home and during the course of the investigation, we received information that the remains of Michael Vaughan might be found behind the house. As a result, we obtained a search warrant. We have not found anything yet, but we'll continue to excavate in the hopes of finding his remains. So we're going to have to be patient because this is one of those cases where, you know, it's been a long time. There's been a lot of speculation. People attacked the parents extremely badly. They went hard at the parents, red flagging them all the way, right? So the parents have been bullied, attacked, harassed. And now, of course, this couple will also go through the same thing. But we don't know. We don't know what is really going on and if they're connected or not. And even how long they've rented the home. And we can kind of see if we do background checks. It seems like they've been there since around 2020. But we just got to wait to see what happens next. So today is really just an intro to the case uh, and a refresher for those of you who know all about the case. There is a $53,000 reward for information leading to finding Michael Vaughan. If you or someone you know has information on Michael's whereabouts, please call the Payette County Sheriff's Office at 208-642-6006, extension zero, or you can email findmichael at fruitland.org. Okay, so uh, these pictures are my word. I'm telling you, man, these cases involving missing children... It's, it just hits hard, you know. I mean, he just celebrated his fifth birthday three days before he went missing. Um, his dad said he's a very friendly guy, you know. <laughs> like, he would go around the neighborhood just saying hi to everyone, bubbly, happy. And neighbors that say that they they saw him, you know, like playing in the yard. And then he must have walked out of the yard because he was, like, knocking on people's doors right around his home. That's what one of the neighbors I've read that they said. So, man... If there was an opportunist around to pick him up, that is so sad. Welcome to membership Le Jardin 711. Thank you, Rob. I need to <laughs> thank you so much for that reminder, Rob. I need that because now we're going to have to put on subscribers only mode because the naughty bots roll in. If you've been in my chat quite a bit, you know the naughty bots roll in around that time <laughs> when we reach a thousand viewers. So I'm going to put subscribers mode. Uh, subscribers only mode on and you only have to subscribe for one minute and then you can continue chatting with us if you were not subscribed yet rose with thorn says he'd be in first grade now i know right oh my word yes south florida girl says i followed on Neville's true crime Neville's true crime has done an excellent job on this case um, he's got a full playlist which is linked in my description box and i'm also going to show you um, a website that he created powered by his patrons which is this one called findmichaelvaughn.com. Uh, notice that Michael's surname is spelled V-A-U-G-H-A-N and not just N. You know, some people leave out the A I see on the hashtags and stuff, just in case you struggle to find things like this. Um, so this is a website that I'm going to put in the chat now as well. And you can also go to Navalis True Crime. He's been a guest on the show um, a few times already, so you guys should know who he is. But um, his channel has got a playlist where he's covered this case extensively. So find Monkey, you can see at the tip line, latest updates, Little Monkey, photos, videos, City of Fruitland Police, posters, flyers, guest book, and he has holiday help. Some of you in the chat were asking for this. The links are right here on findmichaelvaughn.com. And then Monkey Mail, flyers, and media. Stacy Knoll says, I'm new to your channel and am enjoying it. I'm so glad. Thank you for being here. All right, so you guys, this is the website. Remember it. Get your notebooks out. Find Um, As I say, Nevelis True Crime, a YouTuber here. If you don't know about him, go check out Nevelis True Crime. He created it, said the site was made by Nevelis True Crime for Monkey's family and is supported by Nevelis True Crime patron members. So everything you need is all here in one place. And I hope that that will be helpful. All right. Veronica Taylor says, if a small child knocked on my door, I would call the police or take him home to his parents. How could you just turn him away? We don't know if anyone opened the doors or not, though. I don't know that. Um, so I don't know what, what's happening there. Okay. So now that we've looked at the presentation and we have, uh, so you've got a good overview there. We've got the website with all the links where you can help. The one thing I'm going to do quickly is show you this right here. So that you know what's happening now and why I'm talking about this case now. Like, what is what is the latest update? So the latest update is that the Fruitland Police are searching a home related to Michael Vaughan's disappearance. Fruitland Police and Idaho State Police are currently searching a home in Fruitland near where Michael Vaughan disappeared in the summer of 2021. 
they say here, I just want to see, is this site muted? Yeah, uh, not yet. So we'll just mute it in case it gives us big frights. Police have been outside a home in Fruitland on Saturday with a tractor, dumpster, and other individuals based on a lead that they got in relation to the disappearance of Michael Vaughan, a five-year-old that had been missing in July of 2021. He would be six now. They say crime scene tape has blocked off most of the road in a neighborhood across the field near Vaughan's home in Fruitland. The fence from the home was taken apart to allow a tractor to enter the backyard in a home off Red Wing Street in order to excavate the property. At the scene, Fruitland Police Chief J.D. have told KTVB that the couple living in the home does not own it, and at this time police are unaware of any connection between them and the Vaughns. During the course of this investigation, we received information that the remains of Michael Vaughn might be found behind the house, and as a result, we obtained a search warrant. We have not found anything yet, but will continue to excavate in hopes of finding his remains, which is very sad. Idaho Mountain Search and Rescue is also on the scene with Idaho State Police and Fruitland PD have said they arrived on scene late Friday. K-9 dogs were also on the scene. Crews headed home around 6 p.m. That was yesterday. They will be back searching in the morning, which is today. Have said in a previous press conference, the department has gathered a tremendous amount of data, serving 27 search warrants and triple that number in consensual searches. So you see, this is one of 28 search warrants that were served. I hope that they can get closure, but we can't really deep dive the people who are living there right now um, because we don't know if there's if they're going to find him there, if there's any involvement at all. And, of course, we don't want to harass and dox them and all as much as I know that they, well, I mean, they have criminal records. They are red flaggy kind of people, but that's we can't really look too much at that, right? Deb says, wow, so they think he's buried in the back of this house. Yes, that is what's happening there. Uh-huh. <laughs> Thank you, Shelly Babes. You say G is one of the few YouTubers that should be in mainstream. As a well-paid journalist, she's truly gifted at this. Thank you so much. Uh, so they say, have said they now believe that Michael disappeared in a smaller window of time than originally thought. So around 6.40 p.m. to 7 p.m. on July 27, 2021. That was when Tyler Vaughn, Michael's father, said he was in the back bedroom tending to his daughter and ordering pizza on the phone. He came out to the living room and then couldn't find his son. It's unclear why police believe he disappeared within a shorter time frame. So here as well, um, I could actually show you on here. I have it on Twitter here too. I just want to show you how they've been searching. They're all in the backyard. You can see that caterpillar there. Backhoe. Is that what we call that? Backhoe. Right? <laughs> You guys know me if you know <laughs> if you've been here for a while you know we love when i'm like back oh is that what it's called <laughs> yep that's what it's called <laughs> okay so here they were searching i just want to see what this is oh yeah yeah this is a picture from here as well we are closer to the home now this is what they've left so this is how they left it you can see crime scene tape you can see this they've taken this fence down and there's this um, excavating machine a backhoe mm -hmm. yes Exploited Innocent says, I'm trying not to deep dive, however, it's hard, getting some weird vibes. I understand. I understand. I mean, I'm also getting some weird vibes if we just look at, you know, just, just, I don't know, just look at everything, the criminal records, the, you know, the guy being Stacy in custody since May of 2022 for unrelated charges. And then now his wife also being taken into custody since November 11th, 2022. And I mean... Okay, that's like two days ago, right? What's the day today? Today is the 13th, am I right? So she's taken to custody two days ago, and now they're at the home searching like that. So, ooh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, Andy says, I will always call it a digger at Grizzly True, Grizzly True Crime. Backo, it doesn't sound right. <laughs> that's what I said. <laughs> Caterpillar. Okay, so we can see here in a neighbor's yard directly behind the search, and they say Fruitland Police Chief has confirmed they are looking for remains following up on a very credible tip. So I think we just looked at that one as well. All right. So that's what's happening. Now you know the bullet points. We've seen the missing flyer, what he was last seen wearing, his age, where and everything. I know I still have to quickly show you on the map. So let's do it. Just a very quick map time. And then we'll look at the press conference. Okay. So uh, let's put the, okay, the map is there. Uh, Craig G says mom was at work. 
Yes, Michael's mom was at work at the time. Andrea asked, what do two times they've dug up the backyards or just this one time? As far as I know, this is the only time, but I don't know. This is the first time I see them digging in a backyard like this, despite all the other search warrants, right? Okay. So here is a map of Fruitland, Idaho. That's the area we're looking at. Um, Michael's house is on Southwest 9th Street and South Arizona Avenue. So I think it's this one, but one of these houses here, I think is this one. And um, K9 or sniffer dogs and the tracking dogs in the beginning said that they could detect his scent all the way to the end of the street to the right of his house. So um, all the way to the end of the street. So here, and then the scent stopped. So many have speculated he could have been abducted and right from there. Now, if we look at the home they're searching, it is over here. It's right up here, this 1102 Red Wing Street. The only reason I'm telling you the number of the house is because I've seen a lot of misinformation in the last 24 hours where people zoned in on an address that was slightly, you know, a digital too different. And then they <laughs> shared pictures of this um, older couple and they were like, look at these couple, look at them. They did this, but we didn't know anything yet. And the correct address is apparently 1102 Red Wing Street. Uh, if you look at all the videos and all the coverage since then, and the the people that were renting the house both are in custody. So the guy has been in custody since May of 2022, and his wife has been in custody since November 11th, 2022. Him for unrelated charges, her, I don't know for what. So, but look how close that is. I mean, you know, it's another one. It's kind of like, you know, if we look at these cases, I mean, the most recent one where we're looking at a deep dive is, of course, the Delphi case. And it's like, damn, the guy was like right under everyone's nose, right? The guy that they've arrested. And here as well, they've looked everywhere. Tips have gone countrywide. This is um, quite a high-profile case. Um, it's been covered extensively worldwide. And, and now to think that, you know, they're searching the backyard of a home, like right there, right here, searching this backyard. Whoa, that's very, very close. Can you imagine? And that couple, they were also sharing his missing um, poster, <laughs> like, right after he went missing. They were sharing updates about him. The guy even changed his profile picture to a picture of Michael Vaughn. So, mm hmm And this Crestview Park, the reason I have this on here, which is also very close here, that picture that we saw earlier of the photo of the, the man with the grainy picture, just hold on, this one right here, this guy, okay, that was taken around, they said Crestview Park. So I just typed in Crestview Park so we can see where the hell is that. And he was walking around there, which is very close to the home as well. And so they still want to identify who exactly that is. Uh, v says, how did he go missing? Literally no one knows. Nobody knows. But suspected to have been abducted. I mean, as I say, people have attacked the parents very hard for the last year. Um, so, but it's a suspected ab abduction. But yet there's been many theories out there. If you just look at all the <laughs> the coverage out there. Oh, my word. Michelle Roth says, thank you, Gizla. Accuracy is so important. Thank you so much. Okay. So thank you all for being here. Really appreciate it. Um, so that's the map. So now we've got the map as well. You got it. You go, we've got the bullet points. Okay. We've looked at today's updates and what they're doing and where they're searching. And now you've got a, a visual of the map as well of where this is. Fruitland, Idaho, I mean, damn, look at all this, um, these open spaces over here as well. And here's the Snake River. Um, so to think that they might, well, they're looking for his remains, which is very sad to say, but in this backyard. Wow. Like right there. I don't know. So we will go layer by layer as we get news. I just want to make sure that today we all understand what happened, when it happened, how, what, 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 and then we can see where we go from there. Welcome to membership, Teresa B. All right. So I'm going to take this off. All right. And then let me just quickly prepare this. Now we're going to start with this press conference right here. Okay. So what I've done, let's just take this one off. I've, I've pinned all the press conferences in order, in chronological order. You know, I like, <laughs> you know, I like a timeline, you know, I like chronological order. This first press conference, I've set the speed at 1.25. Okay. Because this one is 12 minutes long. The next one is 13 minutes. 
Then we're going to look at the one from uh, November 18, 2021. That one was 23 minutes, 27 minutes. And then maybe tomorrow we'll look at these interviews um, with his parents. These are his parents, Michael Bourne's parents. Um, so we've got that and an interview they did on July 27, 2022. But I don't think we could fit that all in today. So today I want to really go over the press conferences, okay? So make sure you make notes. If anything stands out to you, tell me in the chat as well. I'm going to I'm gonna generally keep quiet and I want to watch this with you guys so that if I just if I pick up on anything else, I'm also going to be making notes. If you're brand new to the channel, thank you for being here. I hope you will subscribe and chat along with us. So I'm going to be taking notes as well. Got my gel pen ready because I write a lot. <laughs> and my fingers get sore. And I hope you guys are ready too. Why do we start from the beginning? One, as a refresher. Two, so that we're ready for any press conferences coming up, whether it's you know later today, whether it's tomorrow, whether they find anything or not. We'll see as we go layer by layer. Thank you so much to P.T. Nottaman. <laughs> Is that so cute? Thank you so much. All right, here we go. Oh, wait, wait, before we do, we know what we have to do. We first have to boost the sound because these are press conferences we're talking about, right? Okay, here we go. <laughs> Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is J.D. Huff, and I'm the Chief of Police for the City of Fruitland. And I just want to start out by saying thank you uh, for attending today. Um, you know, this, is, uh, this, this, this thing is monumental, and um, it, it's super important that we have you guys here helping us out, uh, getting some words out here today. So um, I want to start this off by introducing some of my counterparts here, some of my partners that are helping me with this. Um, I'll start out with Special Agent Brian Sullivan with the F Federal Bureau of Investigation, um, Captain Matt Sly, uh, with the Idaho State Police. I've got Chief John Plaza with the Payette Police Department, uh, Brian Marinelli uh, with the Idaho Mountain Search and Rescue Team, uh, and I've got the family of Michael uh, Joseph Vaughn here, uh, Brandy and Tyler and, and, and Brandy's sister uh, here today with us. So I'm going to read my, my press release to you and then I'll uh, stand by for a few questions for you uh, once we complete this, okay? Um, today, the Fruitland Police Department, in conjunction with the State Police, multiple Treasure Valley law enforcement agencies, and the Federal Bureau of Investigation, we continue to search for missing and endangered five-year-old Michael Joseph Vaughn, MJ to his family and friends. Michael was last seen near his residence on Southwest 9th Street in Fruitland at approximately 6.30 p.m. on July 27th, uh, 2021. Operations to date include the methodical search of the area near Michael's residence, which included two irrigation runoff ditches, which were drained by the Fruitland Public Works Department in an extensive uh, search and rescue effort, including the use of canines, aerial, and marine and land support. Idaho Fish and Game officers are continuing to search the river by boat for four to five miles down river and back up and in the sloughs of the Snake River as well. The Fruitland Police Department will continue to organize search and rescue operations with resources provided by the Idaho Mountain Search and Rescue Team, the Fruitland Fire Department, and the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, and others. We've received a tremendous amount of support from the Fruitland community and will continue to call upon them, but as needed. We're continuing to seek the public's assistance to identify individuals who are in the area of Southwest 8th, Southwest 9th, and Cornwall Way in Fruitland from 6.30 and 7.15 p.m. on Tuesday, July 27, 2021. If you were in that area or you know someone who was, please contact us at 208-642-6006 extension. So you guys, as you can see, sorry to interrupt here. I'm scrolling at the bottom. We are going to be looking at all the press conferences and I'll update the date of the one as we go along. We'll take breaks in between each one and I'll, I'll say some comments. This one was from July 31st, 2021, okay? Extension zero. That's the Payette County Sheriff's Office and again, a tip line. Even if you don't believe you have something that's relevant or relevant information to this case, we want you to contact us so we can recreate a complete picture of the time that Michael was last seen. Every minute counts in these investigations when searching for a missing child, and we appreciate the public support and cooperation as we continue the search for Michael. If you live in the immediate area, please thoroughly search your property to include any outbuildings, vehicles, anything that a five-year-old kid could get into. Uh, we also ask that you review any security camera footage that you may have that may be attached to your house. Uh, video is extremely important to us in these, in these circumstances and these investigations. We're also very grateful for the public's assistance and following up on each lead. We are following up, vigorously following up on each lead that we're getting in. So I want to make it clear that as your tips are coming in, they're not falling on deaf ears. The community knows because they see us out here every single day, pounding the pavement, pounding these rural areas. We are, we are working. We're committed to finding Michael 
and we're not going to leave any stones unturned. So you need to understand that the investigation of this child is a, we're using every resource and it's very intense. We ask that the community only report information from credible sources to law enforcement. And as we know, that as we're just, um, we know that if we're just coming up with speculation, it causes rumors and we'd like to have factual information. So please help us out that way so we can chase down factual leads. We also wanna emphasize that Michael's family continues to be 100% cooperative with our investigation. And we're asking you to be extremely respectful of their privacy during this situation. Um, and we would appreciate that super difficult time as you would know so michael was last seen wearing a light blue minecraft t-shirt over here on my left uh dark blue blocks or briefs a child size 11 sandal um and he stands three foot seven inches tall he's 50 50 pounds he's got blonde hair blue eyes and he answers to the nickname monkey if you see michael have any information that would lead us uh, to his whereabouts or his location please call the Pitt county sheriff's office at 208-642-6006 ex extension zero so we just want to extend our appreciation to our community. We, we thank you for your continued support and the media. And uh, with that, I'll stand for a few questions. So I was uh, I mean, happy to be with a lot of people driving out here wanting to help, but they weren't really sure there was, there was some organized stuff. But just what do you want people to do who are wanting to help you drive out? Do you want them to stay out of your way? Is there things that they can do to help support? Or kind of what direction do you want to get people to Okay, thank you. That's a great question. Uh, and we've been getting that quite a bit. I would tell you that, um, where we certainly appreciate the public's wanting to help us. Um, you know, we've evaluated that several times and, and, and it can become a little problematic for us. So what we're asking the public to do at this point is to search their residences and their homes. Um, you never know, we got a five-year-old kid out there. Um, you know, he can wander in and out of places super easy into people's backyards. Um, any place that he could be on a larger piece of property, that's what we're asking the public to do. We have trained professional search teams with search canines that are certified. And we're in these areas that we, that we have been for the last uh, three days now. Um, so we're asking for the public to stay out of those areas and let us search those with these certified search teams. They're professionals, they know what they're looking for. A lot of times when we recruit civilian help, they miss things. And so where we have such an intense and such an important goal to accomplish, we don't wanna miss a thing. We need to cover those, those pieces of ground inch by inch with trained searchers who know what they're looking for. And they have canines that, that accompany them that are trained and certified as well. So we're just asking the, the, the public to help us out that way let us work through this with trained professionals. At the end of this, if we still find nothing, we may recruit the public's help in another mass area search um, down the road. But that'll be down the road and that is an as needed event, okay? Thank you. Uh, Corey. What, I'm sorry, what credible leads have you gotten so far? Corey, uh, thank you for the question, but I'm, I'm, not, gonna, I'm not gonna opine or, or, or weigh in on the, on, the, on the ongoing investigation into this thing, I just can't do it. Um, so I appreciate are you guys okay with this being on 1.25 speed? I'm just checking. I know it's a little bit faster because it's 1.25. I just think it's a great way to just especially work through the initial press conferences and then the other ones I'll make on normal speed. Uh, thank you so much to Where the Wind Blows, Karen Bookout, and Ellie. Thank you so much for your super stickers. You say late fee. Thanks for covering this, G. I'm not too familiar. Also loved the Patreon stream yesterday. Very cool stuff. Thank you so much. Patreon is a great place to be, you guys. Um, okay. So we're continuing on. I hope that you're okay with the speed, okay? If you're like, why is he talking so fast? That's why, okay? And um, also, I wanted to say, when when the parents were attacked, like, really badly, people even, um, I think a YouTube creator, put a banner, like, across from their house. You know when they're, like, monsters and they're attacking the parents, but they don't know even if the parents are guilty or not? That's really... It's really bad, you know? Okay, you can hear it perfectly. That's really great. Yeah, Mysterious says 1.5. <laughs> I think that would be a bit hectic. This is 1.25. So I think that's just really good. So we could just get through the information uh, without sitting too long. Otherwise, we'll be here for hours and hours. I just want to make sure we have all the information that we need because there might be an update soon or another press conference coming up. We don't know if that's happening today, tomorrow, this week, or what they might find or not. I'll keep you posted. Okay. Appreciate that. Our focus and our main focus is finding MJ and um, and bringing him back to his family, and that's where we're at right now. Search and rescue operations, and we're going to continue doing that. So thank you. And you mentioned uh, canine teams coming in. Uh, were some canines brought in from out of state as well? Uh, well, yes. Yes, they were. You've got canines. Had at least ten specific canine teams from at least three different agencies. I'm sorry. Could you step up to the podium? Yeah. Sorry. We've had at least ten separate canine teams from 
three different organizations that span from coast to coast. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, can you talk a more about what these outside agencies are able to bring to the state? Oh my gosh, thank you for the question. These outside agencies bring everything to the case that I can't. Manpower, resources, um, equipment, um, um, I mean, everything. I mean, the city of Fruitland, we're a small city. Um, you know, we've got 12 officers out here beating the street every day. So bringing these experienced, qualified people uh, into these investigations for us is, is it, it's, it's just completely incredible and it's huge for us. The city of Fruitland Police Department can continue, we can continue to support our community and handle those calls for service that we need to while adding support to this team here as we continue this investigation. Um, yeah, it's, it's incredible. So. Has any additional equipment been brought outside of uh, from the Fruitland Police and Library agencies? Uh, I, I don't understand your question. So any, any other equipment? So, so we do have um, drones that have been brought in from the Meridian Police Department. Uh, we have an uh, Idaho State Police drone, as well as a Payette County drone and a Sand, Sand Hollow Fire drone, all of which um, are pretty sophisticated and they have FLIR capabilities and we are continuing to use those as we search. And just for the people that aren't familiar, could you explain what FLIR is? FLIR is a forward looking infrared thermal imaging device. And so we, we put that up there. We like to primarily do that um, in, in areas where uh, it's a little bit cooler, so maybe in the morning or late at night where we can get a little better uh, signature or heat signature on those devices. And um, so we're continuing to do that. It's, it's a great resource. So. Is, is there anything you can release about, was there any indication of a direction of travel or, or, or a direction that, that Mike might have gone or anything of that nature that you can release? You know, I, I will tell you that he was last seen there on Southwest 9th. We're, we're still trying to pin down some direction to travel, but I, I don't have that. You know, our, our, our goal is to find him and we're going to continue hunting. And I will tell you that everything is on the table on this, okay? So uh, we're going to continue our search and rescue efforts. And I, you know, I appreciate you guys. I, I thank you for being out here today. Um, and having said that, um, would the family like to speak to this at all? <clears throat> Not. I just want to thank the community and all the enforcement agencies that have been continuously, tirelessly looking for him. And anybody that has any information, please contact the Freeland PD. Um, we just want our monkey home. We just miss our baby and we want him home. Anything helps. Anything. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Okay, so that was the press conference from July 31st. So it's only four days after he went missing. This was in July, it's July 31st, 2021. Okay, are we ready to look at the next one? Um, let me quickly see the date of the next one. It is August 4th, 2021 was the next press conference. So I'm going to quickly update that. And I put slow mode on you guys. Remember, if you're a member, um, slow mode doesn't affect you. So... I only learned that recently, and I think that's pretty cool. Okay, so the next one we're going to look at is from August 4th, 2021. All right, which is this one, August 4th, 2021. Let's see the speed of this one. It's normal speed. I'm going to make this 1.25 as well. If it's too fast for you, remember, yeah, you could slow it down on your device as well. You can use the little the settings gear and slow it down if it's too fast for you. Michael's image and information went out to law enforcement nation. Sorry, let's just take it all the way back to the beginning. There we go. With four different alerts by email, phone call, text messages being issued. And I think I might have to, um, sorry, put the booster on for each page. Yeah. To area residents until 1120 that night. Michael's image and information went out to law enforcement nation to a nationwide database known as NCIC, which is the national. I'm so sorry for interrupting again. I just want to make sure this one, take it, turn it off. Put it on again because I want to boost. I want to make sure that we can hear properly. Okay. Center that same night. There we go. Since the time of notification, the Fruitland Police Department, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Idaho State Police, and the Boise Police Department, assisted by 13 different law enforcement agencies throughout the state of Idaho, conducted a complete and methodical thorough searches. These searches included nearly 200 residential homes and properties and interviews of all the residents. You know, five-year-olds can get into almost anything. So we've looked through nearly 200 garbage cans, drained canals and irrigation ditches, and pumped a septic tank in the area that had a makeshift two by six wooden plank lid. We've gathered 60 different videos from residential and business security cameras, and we're combing through that data as we speak. To date, we've received 163 tips. All have been assigned to investigators for follow-up, and many have already been cleared. Others are being worked on as we speak. We conservatively estimated the number of man hours from law enforcement agencies to be in the hour or to be in the range of 2,500 man hours, and that doesn't include our EMS search and rescue partners or the hours put in by the volunteer. 
I think they've done an amazing job. They've searched so much and never stopped searching. This this police department is very impressive, right? Carrie Kimber says, so we are 16 months later at this point. Present day, yes, 16 months later. The press conference we're looking at now, we looked at one from July 31st. Now we're looking at one from August 4th, 2021. And we're going to work through them all so that we're up to speed with all the press conferences. And if there is a press conference today, we will do that as well. Okay. Tears from our community. I got to tell you, I've never seen a police presence like this. And on behalf of Michael's family and the citizens of the city of Fruitland, I sincerely extend our thanks to the chiefs and sheriffs who have came to our aid, providing manpower and resources over the last week and certainly in the weeks to come. I would also like to extend my heart heartfelt appreciation to our friends and residents in the primary search area of Southwest 8th, Southwest 9th, Crestview Subdivision, Hidden Meadows Subdivision, and Three Rivers Way Subdivision. Your patience with our investigation does not go unnoticed. We've been through your homes and in some instances, several times. And from my heart, I truly appreciate you. Our search and ref rescue efforts include the assistance of our citizens from the night Michael went missing to present. And I thank you and I ask you to continue to search your property again. Five-year-olds are crafty and get into small places. Since notification, we've conducted an exhaustive ground search, employing the Idaho Fish and Game, Idaho Mountain Search and Rescue Team, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, both Fruitland and Sand Hollow Fire Departments, and a co coordinated search effort by our citizens. We have methodically and thoroughly searched over 3,000 acres of farm ground with multiple certified canine teams. And we've searched 29 miles of river bank using private fixed wing aircraft, helicopters, sophisticated drones, boats, boats with canines, kayaks, and paragliders. I'm unsure of the number of man hours involved in that effort, but I'm sure it would mirror our investigative effort. Drone flights will continue along with riverbank searches by boat. This morning, the search continued in the area below Southwest 8th Street, where some heavy, heavy foliage was removed and a specialized canine was deployed. In the near future, we have a dive team scheduled to search pond in the sloughs down in the area of Southwest 8th. Um, and our search effort and rescue efforts will continue as long as we have those resources available to continue that. We know people in this community and elsewhere are concerned about Michael and we'll continue to issue updates as the best we can as the investigation continues. To our local media, I wanna say thank you for working with us. You know, it's difficult to respond to every and individual inquiry. Uh, I'll try to address your questions in, this, in, this, in updates as, as this investigation continues and truly appreciate your patience with me. Please understand though, but I can't detail the nature of some of the information we've received or, or the information that we're looking into. And we don't want to release anything that's going to jeopardize our investigation into this. What I can say is we have not eliminated any possibility. Nothing has been ruled out in this case. Social media, it can be a wonderful tool for us. But sadly, it can also be a hindrance, especially when it comes to sharing accurate information. So if there's a development in this case, I will notify you personally. If the information on Facebook or social media doesn't come from me, directly or the Fruitland Police Department, you need to consider that suspect. Rumors and speculation, innuendo, complicate our investigative efforts. And so we appreciate your support in this and just help us by doing that and, and respect our efforts. So back to the National Crime Information Center. Michael's information was entered into the missing child uh, database there through the NCIC as soon as possible after he was reported missing. That means if Michael is found by law enforcement anywhere in the country, he'll be identified and we'll know what to do. What can people do in my community? Well, what I'd like you to do is search the immediate area. Please thoroughly search your property. I can't emphasize. I'm just going to pause this for a second. This one is 13 minutes long. We're halfway. At the bottom, for anyone joining now, I'm scrolling exactly when this press conference was from. I've, this is the second press conference. We just watched the one from July 31st, 2021, right after he went missing. And this would be the one that followed after that. We're going to look at all of them. If you're confused about exactly where, look at the scroll bar right beneath me here, which date we're looking at, when it's from, and check my description box because I put them all in chronological order so that you can see exactly how we're working through them. All right, so here we go. Is that enough? If you've looked once, look again, please. Look at all your outbuildings, vehicles. I want you to walk in your fence lines. We also ask that residents review any security camera footage for any sign of a small children in the area. We continue to say this, but children move around and they wander and they may have traveled back into your yard without your knowledge. So please search again. If you know something, if you know anything, perhaps you're unsure and you don't want to talk to us. Maybe you're even afraid to reach out to us. We are here. We want to listen. We want to listen to what you have to say. Please talk to us. We're very grateful for the public's assistance 
And again, we're following up on every lead that we, we receive vigorously. Our investigators are laser focused and our morale is good. We take care of one another. We're all in this together. We're committed. Don't you just love this guy's language? Laser focused community all in this together and they're searching nonstop. I mean, as we say, they're searching today. They're excavating the backyard of a home just less than a mile away from Michael Vaughn's home. They're defining Michael and we're not going to leave any stones unturned. We also want to emphasize that Michael's family continues to be fully cooperative. I'm going to continue to ask for the respect of their privacy, please. Michael was last seen wearing a light blue Minecraft t-shirt with dark blue or black boxer briefs with a green stripe and a child size 11 flip-flops. Uh, he stands about 43 inches tall, 50 pounds with blonde hair, blue eyes. He answers to the nickname Monkey. And if you see Michael or have any information into his whereabouts or location, please call the Pay County Sheriff's Office at 208-642-6006, extension zero. And that is our tip line. And so with that, I'll stand for a few questions. Trust me, even the chief is struggling to hear this question. Me too. And we've boosted it and everything. So let's just try our best to listen here. This will be something that the taxpayers will, will definitely be covering. We've got uh, our state police. I think he's talking about the cost of the searches. You know, who's covering that? How long will it last? And all of that kind of stuff. Police agencies. We've got, um, we've got federal agencies involved in this. Uh, I can't see any of this falling on the family members. Sure. So we've employed the uh, we've employed a dive team to come in here pretty soon. And, and the reason why we're doing that is because we have a lot of resources available to us. And when we're really not sure what happened. We're going to use every resource uh, at our that we have at our that's available to us. So they're going to be at the end of Southwest 8th Street uh, down by the Snake River in the slough area down there. You know, they did not today. So our thoughts and prayers are with them. You know, I have a, a, a few private individuals uh, that have contacted me, reached out, and, and that will be coming. So, I've made sure to turn on closed captions on my video as well. So I'm putting it on here too. It's also activated when I talk. So make sure that you have yours here. There's the little CC closed captions button at the bottom, you know, of the video. Like this. Make sure yours is selected so that you can maybe pick up what the questions are. I'm struggling as well at maximum volume. You're like, sorry, what? And I'm just listening to the answers at this point too. All right. There's a few things that members of the community can do to help. What about people that are from out of the area that come in? Uh, what can they do to help or should they try to stay out of the search area? You know, I think they need to take a look at our flyers and stay vigilant. I think that's the best thing that they can do for us. Uh, we've got a lot of support in this community and everybody wants to help. Like I said, it's, we're all emotionally tied to this thing, and we certainly appreciate them. And our primary goal, the number one goal that we have, is locating Michael and bringing him home. Can I just touch on the finance aspect? I, I want to just thank our community. Uh, over the last seven days, today included, um, our community partners, business owners, have donated um, countless amounts of food and drink to our search efforts. And I just want to throw it out there to them. They've been wonderful. The support has been great. And um, just a sincere thank you. Yes, that, that has been a problem for us, uh, especially with our canine units. Uh, they're tough, uh, but they can only go so long before those dogs need a break. Um, you know, and I guess I would say the same thing for our searchers. You know, sometimes they're in these fields slugging it out in the mud, um, you know, doing what they do. But my goodness, um, I, I can't say enough for them. They're super tough. So. Yeah, there are a lot of concerns when it comes to that. And um, after that heavy rain that we had the other day, that was one of our major concerns, especially with scent tracking dogs. Um, so we'll continue to deploy those. Uh, it's still a resource we have at our, uh, available to us, at our access, and we're going to continue to do that. So. you heard anything about a motorcycle drive-by on Friday uh, for Michael's family and his parents that was taking place around 7.15 p.m.? Is that something that you're aware of this time? I have not. I have no knowledge about that. This is a day by day situation, and I, I'll, I'll tell you again that as long as I have those resources available to me, they will continue to be deployed. 
Okay, I'm just going to pause here. Um, bashing of the family on this channel will not be tolerated. We never bash the families. We trust the family. Hashtag trust the family. I know that sometimes families can be guilty of things. We do not know that this family is guilty of anything. We want to show them support, kindness, love, empathy, as their five-year-old, who now would be six, is missing for over a year, 16 months, okay? So mods, if you see anyone bashing the family in the chat, please delete those messages because we don't do that here. Okay, so I know in this case it's been that way. It's really been bashing, but like terrible, horrific things have been said to this family, about this family. Please, let's not do that. We're going over the case methodically, looking at everything logically. Let's look at the press conference. I know emotions run high when it's missing children as well. I feel it too, you know. I feel sad and angry and like what happened and who's to blame and what, but we don't know yet. We don't know all we know right now and um for those only rolling in asking what's the latest news we shared that at the beginning of the episode so i hope you'll check um the replay out but just so you know they are searching at this house just um less than a mile away from michael's home if i look right now on twitter from 10 minutes ago they say that there's more canines out there their tails are wagging they're getting some good pets in they're still searching at the house um they've got a bigger a tractor or a backhoe or a caterpillar to scoop bigger is what they're saying. So they are doing a, a deep dive in that backyard. So they've got a credible tip that um, told the police to search that um, the backyard where they are searching today. They've already ser um, served about 27, they said, search warrants um, in, over the past 16 months since Michael Vaughan went missing. But this is the first time that I'm seeing. Um, I haven't, I've just been following this case, you know, as updates came in. So not a deep dive like we're doing today, but I haven't seen them searching a backyard like this before the crime scene tape and, you know, excavating the backyard and all that. So I don't know what kind of tip they received or how they know, but... Um, as they said, they use FLIR, which is uh, thermal imaging drones, the canines. They've drained all sorts of areas, um, bodies of water, and they've really been searching so hard for Michael Vaughan. So today we are really just looking at this um, neutrally, logically, okay, and, and let's see what happens. If there's any updates today, I will keep you posted. I'm monitoring the news as we're going through this. If there's anything to share with you, if they find him or find anything, I will let you know. Okay, so hang in there. So our efforts uh, outside of the city of Fruitland just include media, uh, getting the information out there, as well as we've had teams of people posting up flyers, our missing flyers that were generated by our fusion center here in Idaho. Um, so that, you know, other than that, that's where we're at. Okay. One last question just for time. We got to get back to work. Anybody got anything? Okay. All right. Well, listen, I thank you for coming. I appreciate you guys more than you know. So I'll keep you updated as, uh, as things develop. Okay. All right. Thank you. I love it. I was like, any more questions? Because uh, we got to get back to work. Did you just love that? <laughs> love that. Okay. Let me just quickly take this off and prepare the next one for you guys. So we've looked at two of them now from July and August 2021. Now I'm going to prepare the next one for you. So let's just unpin this one. We've looked at that one. Okay. We're methodically working through them. Uh, just hold on one second. I think I have to take the boost off and put it back on. You know how computers go. This one is from November 18th, 2021. That's what we're going to be looking at next. So as I say, we're looking at the scroll bar, November 18th, 2021, the third press conference since his disappearance. And beyond that, we're going to look at one more after this. So it's this one. And then one more after this, which was July 22nd, 2022. Okay. And if there is one today or any news, I will let you know as well. As I say, I'm monitoring the news as we're doing this. I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page as we go forward if there's any news in this case. So that's what we're doing today. Thank you for being here. Really, really appreciate it. So this one is, as I say, from November 18th, 2021. Make it full screen for us. Wait, wait. Hold on. There you go. Okay, so we've got it full screen for us. November 18, 2021, scrolling at the bottom in case anyone 
I wonder how you guys miss this sometimes. You see the scroll bar? Just check it here and there to see what's happening. And, and as, as I said, in the description box, I have every single press conference chronologically listed that you can click on and watch anytime yourself. Um, if you, you know, if you haven't seen it before, if you want to refer back to it, or if you want to see where we're at now, how many we've looked at. Okay, so playback speed, we're going to do 1.25 as well. Closed captions is on. Put it on for you as well on your side. Make sure so that you can see everything that's said. Okay, we're ready. I just want to answer this one question here. Amber Gloria asks, uh, a woman was arrested in connection to his disappearance or something else. So the, the tenants at the home where they're searching in the backyard, the male was arrested on unrelated charges in May of 2022. And his wife has since been taken into custody November 11th, 2022. But they haven't said that it's at all related to any charges. They don't know if they're connected at all to this case. All they know is they got a credible tip to search that backyard, and that's what they're going in with with equipment. So that's why we know. Today is the day before my one week out. Oh, really? Yeah. Sandy Day out. Sandy Day out. Well, let's not listen to small talk here. Let's go here. There you go. Good afternoon. Um, thanks for coming. I appreciate having everybody here today. Uh, I'd just like to introduce uh, those who I have up here with me today. I've got Captain Matt Sly with the Idaho State Police, and I've got uh, Supervising Agent Doug Hart with the Federal Bureau of Investigation. And then I also have joining us today the mother of Michael Joseph Vaughn, Brandy Neal. Thanks for being here with us today. We appreciate you. So that's Michael's mother that's there. She's always been present there at the press conferences. She's been complying. She's been begging, pleading for help finding her son. And I cannot imagine what she's going through. I know she's also done interviews um, on YouTube before, as we know, when families get on YouTube, ooh, things can get real nasty for them real quick, which is not at all what we want. If we ever have family on the show, we treat them with utmost respect. Um, we share everything we can to help them find their loved ones. Uh, Book Girl says, if you, once you listen in 1.5 speed, you'll never go back. I agree. I listen to everything on 1.5 speed, podcasts, YouTube videos, everything. Today, we're listening on 1.25 speed so that we can get power through all the information at a nice speed, but not too slow. Let's go through it. We boosted the sound. Are we ready? Let's take notes again. Okay, so we've got um, November 18th, 2021 is when this uh, took place. Okay. Um, I want to start out by thanking our friends from the media for being here and giving us another opportunity to get this, to get Michael back in the headlines and at the forefront. Michael's case has impacted everyone who has heard about it, but likely not as much as it, as it has uh, impacted Brandy, uh, Tyler, Michael's family, and the law enforcement officers working day in and day out to find him. I want to express my sincere thanks to you all for being here and covering the updates that we have for you today. The search for Michael will not stop until he's found, and the search remains very active. As I've said to the public, the effort may look a little bit different from time to time, but those of us in law enforcement leading the search and the investigation, Michael's on the top of our mind. He's our top priority, and finding him is an intense daily part of our lives. Michael Joseph Vaughn was last seen near his residence on Southwest 9th Street at approximately 6.30 p.m. Tuesday, July 27, 2021. The first missing and endangered child alert went out at 8.20 p.m. with four different alerts to email, phone calls, text messages being issued to the area residents until 11.20 p.m. that night. Michael's image and information went out to law enforcement nationwide and a database called the National Center for um, Crime, or the National Crime Information Center. And Michael has also been entered in the state of Idaho missing person clearinghouse. From the time of notification, an exhaustive search effort and criminal investigation began simultaneously. So our ground searches are based on the highest probability that Michael may have wandered off, potentially gotten hurt, stuck in an irrigation ditch, a swimming pool, uh, an outbuilding, an old appliance, junk vehicle, anywhere a 50 pound curious boy uh, could hide himself. We wanted to make sure that all the ground within a one to two mile radius from Southwest Knight Street where, where Michael lives has been searched by residential homeowners, professional searchers, law enforcement, and specifically trained canines. For those asking, yes, this is Michael's mom standing right next to the chief here, J.D. Huff. Also, um, there's a lady who's a reporter for KTVB, Alexandra Duggan, on Twitter as well. And she's updating minute by minute. And she says, 
56 minutes ago, the backhoe or tractor left. It's going to get an even bigger scoop. The fire chief told me it's to move things along faster, said they got a slow start yesterday and that they peeled back the first couple of layers of dirt, more layers to be dug up. And they also, she also said dog handler is speaking to all investigators. They are nodding their heads. They can't hear, can't hear what she's saying. Heard a couple of good boy. They are pointing to areas within the yard. Unsure if they found anything, I'll ask later. One dog left the yard and many crews went in and they say the other dog is going in now, looks to be around the front of the house. So that's a three minute old update. I will keep you updated as we're looking at these past press conferences on any breaking news in this case. Okay. This press report sees Sky River Blues asking, this is what I mean, you guys, if you're asking, just look at the scroll bar below. Look below. We are going over all the press conferences to date, this one was from November 18th, 2021. Every time we're looking at a press conference, um, not only is it in my description box, but I'm also scrolling it below so that you can follow along and see exactly where we're at, okay? So here we go. And not just one of these groups, but by all of these groups. As such, we've been conducting these searches continuously, even up to this week. On Monday of this week, the Idaho Mountain Search and Rescue with specialty canines and the Fruitland Police Department conducted searches in the front and backyards of nearly all the homes on Southwest 9th Street, as well as another large acreage off of Northwest 1st Street in between Nevada and, and, and Highway 95. On Tuesday, the Idaho Mountain Search and Rescue with their specialty canines, with the Fruitland Police Department, the Idaho State Police, who had a drone in the air, and the FBI, we methodically searched the farm ground to the southeast and southwest of Southwest 9th Street. Combined, we, we, we searched close to a thousand acres this week. Why would we continue to search areas that have been searched multiple times before? Well, because we haven't found Michael yet and conditions change. So further, you can imagine going home every night as a law enforcement officer wondering, you know, did we miss something during that search? And one more pause um, for anyone asking, have the parents ever been cleared? We don't want to bash them, but no one's been cleared. No one, including the parents, have been cleared in this case. They are just desperately searching for Michael Vaughn. Michael, Brandy, and Tyler, and the community continues to count on us to keep up the search, and that is why we continue to search. And I've said from the beginning that as long as those resources are available, we will continue to ask for them. Remember that a criminal investigation, that happened at the same time a notification as the time that Michael went missing. And due to the fact that we've conducted multiple searches using every tool available to us with no success, it increases the possibility that Michael was abducted. From the beginning until, I guess, until we find Michael, we're considering every possibility and following up on every lead developed, every tip that comes in, and the total number of tips that we've received to date is over 557. The majority of those tips have been cleared by investigation. The others are currently being worked on. Word of our search has gone worldwide, and tips on where he might be have come in from literally around the globe. Thanks to resources available to us again, every tip, regardless of how many miles away, is going to be followed up on. We're committed and we work together to support each other. Every day we come to work, we work through the exhaustion um, for investigators. There's always highs and lows. Each day we go through these highs and lows. And I can't tell, but what I can tell you is, I can tell you with certainty that the Fruitland Police Department and our law enforcement partners are using every resource available and we'll continue to look into every possibility until we know exactly what happened. We're steadfast in our commitment to bringing Michael home safely. I want to thank each and every search member, the search teams that have been out here, and each and every investigator for their time and expertise and the commitment they put into helping us bring Michael home. We also want to emphasize Michael's family who continues to be fully cooperative, working closely with us on, on almost a daily basis. We ask the community to continue to respect their privacy. As for the reward for Michael, um, the reward for Michael's safe return remains in effect, uh, and it's increased. The amount uh, has increased to $50,100. And that's for anyone having information to the, uh, leading to the safe return of Michael. And that'll be available until March 31st, 2022. I should also note that Michael's family has made considerable contributions to this reward fund, as have members of the, of the community. And every donation that we've, we've, we've pulled in has been uh, appreciated. I'm gonna continue to update our Facebook page periodically during the course of this investigation. I'll continue to do so if we have some significant developments and our efforts to keep, to keep the community uh, informed as the best we can. And so with that, at this time, I'd like to introduce uh, Michael's mother, Brandy. Brandy is representing the, Braun, the Vaughn family today, and she would like to uh, give a statement. So, so this is Michael's mother. A lot of you in the chat are saying that they've been cleared I'm always cautious to say cleared because police say they do not believe that the parents are involved in any way. So I suppose that means cleared, right? And I do not 
we do not bash families or parents in this chat, okay? But so cleared, I guess, yes, they've said there's they have they do not believe they're involved at all. And as we know, the house they're searching at, they don't they say they don't believe there's they don't know any connection to who lives at that that house and the Vaughns either. This must be can you imagine going through this? I mean, never mind the online harassment, bullying, cyberbullying, hate. It's horrific what they've been through. So I especially would like us to be really, really kind to the parents to show that we support them. And we really hope that there will be answers soon. Of course, we really want Michael Vaughn to be found alive. He's would be six years old right now. But as the police have said, they are, they are searching for his remains in that backyard, which is very, very sad. Hello, everyone. I want to thank you for all being here today. My name is Brandy Neal, and I am Michael Joseph Vaughn's mama. I am here before all of you today on behalf of my family to speak about Michael. As much and everyone in our family wants to be up here in front of all of you today, I am here to speak on all of our behalf. I am here to ask you all, I'm here to ask you please, please for your help. I am here to ask you to please keep Michael's face his name and his story in every one of your hearts, your eyes, and your minds. It has been 115 days, 115 days. He has not been home. And we need every one of you. I need you. I need your help to bring my baby home. And again, for those of you just rolling in now, we went over map time bullet points, updates, the latest news and everything before we looked at all these press conferences. This is the third press conference we're looking at chronologically and the date is scrolling at the bottom, November 18th, 2021. I need you to see his beautiful smile. I need you to see how happy he is. That smile was one of our most favorite camping trips. He, he got to see his first beaver dam and he got to catch so many frogs that day. And he was so excited. His beautiful blue eyes. He was so happy that day because I promised we would go get ice cream cones and he laughed so hard because his baby sister got to have her first ice cream cone and it was everywhere. We got to play at the park that whole day. It was warm, it was sunny, and we played catch, we played football until it got dark. I need you. I need your help. Please. I need you to know how much Michael is loved. I need you to know how much he is missed. Our family is broken without him. We miss his laughs, his smiles. We miss his hugs. I need you to know. He is such a sweet, fun, exciting little boy. He brings such joy and love to our family and everyone that he knows and that knows him. Michael has a laugh that is beyond contagious. You can't help but smile and laugh when you hear his laugh. We need him home. I, I 
am asking for your help. I am asking for everyone's help. Please, please, if you know anything, if you know anything at all, if you know something, please, I am begging. This is my baby. This is my son. I need him home. I want him home. Please, I need your help to bring him home. I want to thank all of the community and the extended communities and everyone who continues to keep Michael. In your thoughts, in your prayers, and in your eyes. Please keep sharing his picture. Please, any information to help bring my son home. I want to thank the Fruitland Police Department, the state, FBI. I want to thank all of them for their continued support. They have become family, and they are his son too. So please, please, please help me. Please help me bring my baby home. I'm just going to pause it there for a second because we've got lots of people joining now. Thank you so much, Faith. I really appreciate that. Um, so if you're only rolling in now, we are looking at a the case, the Michael Vaughan case from the beginning. So what we did at the beginning of this live stream was go over all the bullet points of what happened, when it happened, how it happened, everything that we need to know, information that you can go back in the replay and look at uh, within the first 10 minutes, right? Then we looked at some map time. And we looked at today's news and why we're looking at this case right now. So today's news, this actually started yesterday. Uh, the police swarmed a home very close to Michael Vaughan's house. And he's been missing for 16 months at this point. So uh, July 27th, 2021. And so today, that is, you know, a lot of action taking place in this case where police have gone to this home. Uh, they have no idea if uh, the people that were living in the home, which were tenants, they were renting the home, have any connection at all. They haven't, they said there's no connection at this point to the Vaughns. Um, the male that was renting the home, so it's a married couple. The, the guy has been in custody since May 2022 on unrelated charges. And his wife was taken into custody November 11, 2022. They haven't said for what or why, but they are digging at that house. So we are looking at minute by minute updates. I'm monitoring the news while we're looking at press conferences from um, in chronological order from when it started over a year ago. So the first one we looked at was July 31st, uh, 2021. And then the next press conference we looked at was August 4th, 2021. The one we're looking at right now is from November 18th, 2021. And we have one more to look at afterwards, which was actually from July 22nd this year. And then if there's any breaking news today or any other press conferences happening today, I will be sharing that with you. I'm doing this so that we can all be prepared with a case, get a good recap, a good refresher. Or if you're brand new to the case, you'll also learn all about the case because we're watching all the press conferences together. We've done everything we can to share as much information as well as the tip line. Everything is in the description box. There's a $53,000 reward for information leading to finding little Michael Vaughan, who would be six years old right now. If you have any information to share, the number to call is 208-642-6006. You can also email findmichael at fruitland.org. And I've shared a website that Nevelist True Crime created earlier, um, which was findmichaelvaughan.com, I believe. I just want to find it again. Yeah, findmichaelvaughan.com. So check there as well if you want to see some other links and updates and photos and things like that. I'm putting it in the chat right now. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Please like the video and share. Hashtag find Michael Vaughn. Remember his surname is spelled V-A-U-G-H-A-N. Don't forget the A, okay? I forgot the A when I first was searching this. V-A-U-G-H-A-N if you share the hashtag so that we can, you know, categorize it all nicely together. So let's continue to look at this press conference. Um, from the scroll bar, you can see when it is. Description box, you can see how many we've looked at so far. This one was from November 18th, 2021. 
please keep us in our please keep us all in your prayers anything please help please help us bring our baby home thank you thank you brandy so at this time um i'll take a few questions Go ahead. Uh, so what are some of the more credible tips that you folks have received? I know you said you got nearly 600, but have any uh, bore any fruit to any extent so far? Um, I will tell you that several of them have bore fruit, but they just um, they just don't go anywhere. So um, as far as credible tips, uh, we've, we've received several credible tips. We work on those every single day. Um, we just find that they take us nowhere at the end of the day. So those are the highs and lows that we talk about. So um, that, that, that's about all I can say about that. Is there any update with the white Honda Pilot and the male adult that you guys had in that surveillance camera that you put on Facebook a few weeks ago? There is um, no update on that. We still have not located the driver of the white Honda Pilot or that individual that we've seen walking down through the park uh, right about that time frame, uh, as I've described in the past. Do you believe um, Ron is asking, so he went missing at night. He went missing between 6.40 and 7 p.m. on July 27, 2021, which would be summertime, and the sun would then be setting at around 9 p.m., so it was still light outside. I believe that uh, this car or this person may be a suspect in this at all or have any information? I don't, uh, but we certainly need to identify them uh, just due to the fact that they were in the area uh, around the time that Michael went missing. Um, they may have seen something. We just don't know that uh, until we talk to them. Any other individuals um, you guys are seeking for information or suspects? Uh, not at this time. Uh, we're still coming through, um, you know, large amounts of data uh, to try to come up with new leads. Um, and, uh, you know, once we do, if we need the public's help in identifying that, then we'll certainly reach out to you guys. Have there been any areas that have been ruled out? Um, so I understand your question. Are you talking about uh, areas of um, like ground or what? Ground, um, search, just anywhere. Um, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, as we move forward and, you know, we've had uh, multiple searches, multiple canines, professionals, law enforcement, um, all over this ground around within that one to two mile radius, like I said. Um, you know, it would lead us to believe that uh, there's a possibility that he, he was abducted. So as we continue to kind of work through this process and eliminate these possibilities, um, you know, that's where we're, that's where we're led. Is there any sense of increased urgency now that winter is approaching with the change in weather, the change in conditions to the search that you guys are dealing with? Well, yes, there is. And that's exactly why we um, conducted another search this week, as a matter of fact. So the change in weather, the change in conditions, uh, we wanted to make sure that we were out there and we had professionals with eyes on the ground at every inch uh, to make sure that that ground was covered before the snow flies. So, Corey. Yeah. Has Michael Zane been registered on the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children? Site? Yes, it has with, with Nick Met, yes. Right. And if, with your permission to ask a question of Randy, how? No, uh, no? No, you, can, you need to direct those questions okay. toward me. Yeah. We've been curious at the newspaper how this is affecting how they plan to spend the holidays together. Yeah, well, as you can imagine, um, the holidays under these circumstances, Corey, are going to be extremely tough um, for the family. So, and as Thank you, PT. This was normal speed. Um, I got a request in the chat to put the mom's speech at normal speed, which I did then. And now I'm going back to 1.25. Thank you so much. As, as, as law enforcement partners, we're going to continue to lift them up and stand right beside them and uh, help them get through these tough times. So and I would ask that the community help us with that as well. And as the community continues to be invested in this case, um, I know it's reached states all over the country. Are there any partner agencies, maybe we have the FBI, we have uh, Idaho State Police, is there any other partner agencies, uh, maybe Oregon or in Utah that you guys have been in contact with? You know, we've had um, agencies from outside this state, um, uh, multiple local law enforcement agencies help us with this. Um, you know, some of the states, we've had California, Alabama, um, Utah, um, several uh, law enforcement agencies helping us with this. And as we get these tips that are out of state, we'll continue to recruit more help um, when it comes to finding Michael. So, yeah. Just going to pause for a second. JC Marty asks, question, victim blending, meaning no questions or concerns about the family. Don't law and start 
law enforcement started with the family members just asking. Okay, so yes, they do, and they do not believe they're involved at all, um, which, you know, they've been cleared, even though no one can be completely cleared until the end of this investigation, but they say they do not believe their parents are involved at all. And at this point, we're looking at this with a fresh pair of eyes. That's how I see it. I've never covered this case on my channel before, even though I've been following along. I want to look at this with with a fresh pair of eyes, and by pair, I mean all of us, <laughs> you know, because there's been so much attack, so much focus on the family that it's really become extremely hateful, terrible. Um, they've been bullied, harassed. Um, they've put out banners outside their homes. I mean, that's the last thing we need. So, you know, if you want to join in on everyone that's already done that, then there's plenty of communities for that. What we're doing today is looking at it very methodically, logically, let's look at the press conference, let's see what is, is being said here, and let's look at the updates um, of them, the police digging at a home less than a mile away from Michael Vaughan's house. Like, what is that all about? What is happening, right? So, interesting. Okay, so I'm just looking at the news of what's happening here. There's actually something happening on Twitter. Yeah, just one second. Okay. And they are being cooperative, so they are not a focus of the investigation. And that is the update. Okay, sorry. I'm just listening quickly to Twitter. What's okay. happening here? Let's play this. So, if anyone has questions, just let well, me know. So far, and sure. hopefully um, this works. Earlier in the conference that the likelihood of this being an abduction seems to be a little greater at this point. Uh, what is the circuit like with the relatives and extended family? Have you folks spoken all the time? Yes, we have. We've spoken to them through um, Brandy and, and Tyler. And, um, you know, it just, um, I will tell you, it just, you know, we're where we're at. It didn't yield. It's not yielding. So is, is that your? Is that what you're asking me? If yes, if you got any leads from aunts, uncles, grandparents. Yeah, we have not at this point. And JC Marty, I absolutely appreciate your question. Um, I took it as an opportunity just to answer that for everyone in case they're like, why won't you? You guys know. <laughs> you know, I see red flags. I can't not see red flags when I see them. At this point, with everything I've researched, I don't see it personally myself with the parents. Um, and we're just, as I say, looking at this with a with a fresh pair of eyes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Angela, fresh 2.4K eyes. <laughs> exactly. So let's look at it from another angle. The angle of bashing the parents and showing them a lot of hate. Very, I mean, so little kindness. Let's not do that. Let, you know, that's already been done. So let's look at this with fresh eyes and see what we can learn. And I will keep you posted on any breaking news right now. Okay, um, I think we're going to conclude. Thank you for coming. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Okay. So, as they walk out, right? Now we're going to prepare the next one. So, the next one will be the most recent one, which was from July 22nd, 2021. So, I'm going to put this banner on. Okay, this is the fourth press conference they've had since Michael went missing. This would be number four that we're looking at today. So let's go there, shall we? Let's go there. Hold on, let me just get this ready here. Sorry, so I'm going to take some time in between because I want to make sure that it's full screen for you. This is, yeah, July 22nd. It's got to be full screen for you. It's got to be boosted sound. So I make sure that I boost the sound for you, which I'm doing right now. And here we go. All right. I just while we're quickly waiting for the next uh, press conference, just hold on, meaning the next one in the in the line. I just quickly want to see if there's any new updates um, as I'm monitoring the news. They say, um, per Chief Huff, the intention is to dig three feet deep in the soil, and they intend to do so across the entirety of the yard. Okay, so that's all we have so far. There's no new information other than that, okay? All right. And happy two-month anniversary to Sherry. Sorry if I missed a message there. My bad. While I'm looking for all these things. Thank you for being a member for two months. Okay, so let's look at this one. Again, I boosted the sound for you. I made sure that closed captions is turned on. And I'm also going to put it at 1.25 speed. So we can watch this and gather all the information. Okay. So after today, we're all going to be on the same page with this, with this case. 
All right. Candy says, gosh, that poor mother. I couldn't even imagine. She looks like she's trying really hard to be strong and not cry, right? Geraldine asks, are you saying that people put hate banners in front and across of the house? That's crazy. Indeed, they did. Indeed, they did. Okay, so here we go. Uh, I'm gonna lock the down now. Just so you know, we're uh, hot, we're screaming now, so everything's being locked. Okay, thank you. Um, I can try. Yeah. Give me a sec. You want that reset up? Yeah. Like if it. Yeah, tape it to that. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I think that's yeah. probably a little bit better. Possibly, I don't know if we I don't know. like. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. My test. You guys still good? Okay. Sorry, I'm just checking when they actually start talking. Here we go. Good morning, everyone. Um, I just wanted to start out by thanking you guys for showing up. I apologize for the short notice on this and moving this up in our schedule, but we identified some travel conflicts and some other commitments that uh, weren't going to allow some of our partners to be here today. So they wanted to be here today. It was important for everybody to make it on uh, this anniversary of Michael's disappearance. And so um, I appreciate you for indulging us and um, moving this up in your schedules as well. So um, I quickly want to recognize the uh, Fruitland Police Department the men and women of our department as our staff continues to work tirelessly to keep this department moving forward as we continue to investigate Michael's case. So their loyalty and courage and tenacity is clearly unmatched. And it's a privilege to lead and work with these people every day. I just wanted to introduce some of my partners as I've done in the past, our partnerships. Have Sorry, I'm just gonna pause. I see you guys saying, watch out for James. He says, or oh, she, he, she, you can't be real in here. You can't be real in here. Just don't be an asshole, okay? We don't wanna be bashing anyone, trolling anyone. It's a, it's an empathic community. Go to my about page if you wanna check it out. Um, so yes, <laughs> um, thank you so much for being here, everyone. I really appreciate it. If you didn't catch the beginning of the stream, I hope that you'll catch the replay because we went over a lot of information. I'm just gonna very quickly give you a preview. This is what we went over, bullet points like this. We looked at pictures of Michael Joseph Monkey Vaughan, so initials MJV, which is why the initials in the blue heart on his mom's shirt. We looked at everything chronologically, bullet points from everything we know um, and what they're doing right now, and then also the tip line and everything like that. And now we're looking at a press conference which took place. Um, this one is from July 22nd, 2022. It's the most recent one. So there might be another one if they, depending on if they find anything or not in that backyard. Uh, the updates that I can see from right now is that they haven't, there's no news right now. They just say, um, let me see when this was from, that, you know, there's, ca there's cadaver dogs out there and they say they're very uh, lively and wagging their tails and they're saying, good boy, good boy. And then crews are going in there. So yeah, they've searched um they're searching layer layer by layer in that soil because you also can't just ruin if there is evidence in there okay so thank you everyone for being here i really appreciate it let's continue listening to this haven't changed um i'd like to introduce supervisory agent in charge doug hart with the fbi uh captain matt sly with the idaho state police chief gary marshall with the payette city police department sheriff andy creech with the payette county sheriff's office and mark sullivan with the idaho mountain search and rescue we also have with us today the family of Michael Vaughn. We've got Brandy Neal, Tyler Vaughn, and Bob Vaughn, and Bug. So it's nice to have them here with us today. So since the evening of July 27th, 2021, the Fruitland Police Department, the Idaho State Police, the FBI, law enforcement agencies, and law enforcement agencies across the country have investigated the disappearance of five-year-old Michael Vaughn. We haven't stopped. Every day we have unfinished business, and I'll tell you that every day is an anniversary 
of the disappearance from Michael Vaughn for us. Law enforcement, the family, the families of law enforcement in our community. Our investigation re remains intense and strong. So I wanna take a moment to just kind of cover some significant aspects of the case to provide some context for those who aren't completely familiar with our case or those might be jumping in a little bit later. Um, a lot of it I've covered in, in uh, prior press conferences, but I wanted to cover it again today. So Michael Joseph Vaughn was last seen at his residence on Southwest 9th Street at approximately 6.30 p.m. Tuesday, July 27, 21. Law enforcement re received the first call by 911 at 7.21 p.m. and we began an immediate search of the area. And I should note that law enforcement across the country receives these type of calls every year. Uh, numerous calls like this, we call them wander offs. And they conclude, but after finding the child safely with friends or family, and clearly it's typically a breakdown in communication. So you need to know the first missing and endangered alert went out at 8.20 uh, with different alerts to email, phone calls, text messages being issued to area residents until 11.20 that night. Michael's image and information went out to law enforcement nationwide on a database called the National Crime Information Center or NCIC. Um, and Michael's also been entered into the state of Idaho Missing Person Clearinghouse and the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. The Fruitland Police, Payette Police, and Payette County deputies and citizens searched through the night until support arrived the following morning. The ensuing response was immense. We had over 100 law enforcement officers from federal, state, and local agencies, including the FBI Child Abduction Rapid Deployment Team, along with trained search teams converged on our small city of Fruitland. Our physical search efforts were conducted by experts from the Idaho Fish and Game, the Idaho Mountain Search and Rescue, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, both Fruitland and San Paulo Fire Departments, multiple law enforcement agencies, and coordinated citizen searchers. Just going to pause right there. Where says the people who lived in that house have not been named as suspects? Exactly. Thank you for saying that. That's why I'm not really, I'm not deep diving them. I mean, I see people are, and their pictures are being shared everywhere. Yesterday, pictures of an elderly couple were being shared everywhere as suspects, but they weren't suspects either. In fact, people had the wrong address of the home that they're searching. So we have to be very, very careful. We don't know anything at this point, why they're searching that house, what tip they got. We only know who lives there and where they are right now, but we don't know anything beyond that, if they have anything to do with this whatsoever. Also, one of the updates right now, I see the time in Fruitland, Idaho, which is where this case takes place. Um, it's right now just gone after noon. It's like how many minutes? Two minutes past noon over there. And one of the reporters from the area says, update. Fruitland Police Chief J.D. Huff, which is the guy talking right now, This remember this press conference is from July, uh, this year says they plan on excavating the entire backyard. Their plan is to dig three to four feet deep. He'll have further updates for us around 1 p.m. So the media is out there. Uh, they waiting and looking for updates. And if there are any updates, I will keep you posted. If we are still here, we'll look at it together. Yeah, the update in just less than an hour, but in about an hour. Yeah, exactly. So we'll we'll be looking. Um, Denise says there's going there is going to be having a presser. I'm not too sure if they will be or not because they haven't found anything yet. Um, 1 p.m. Thank you, Mountain Side says exploited innocents. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, we got to do. 11:03. In Idaho. When I look Fruitland, Idaho's time right now, it says it's 12.01 p.m. Is that not correct? Yeah, that makes sense because they're having updates at 1. Not? Okay, so continuing on. The search included over 200 residential homes, properties including outbuildings, a septic tank, garbage cans, vehicles, irrigation ditches, and drain canals. Trained search teams and law enforcement along with specialized canine teams from across the country searched over 3,000 acres of farm ground, along with areas surrounding the city and out into the county. Sophisticated drones, boats with sonar, uh, boats with canines, kayaks, paragliders. I would say that if we could have dammed the Snake River, we would have. I mean, that's commitment. If they could have dammed the Snake River, they would have. Harley 62, which backyard are they excavating? We went over some map time at the beginning of the stream, so please go check it out. If you just scroll back, um, probably to about 15 minutes in, uh, you'll see it there. I will show it again after this press conference that we're looking at, which is from July 22nd, 2022. With the help of residences and businesses, uh, we were able to retrieve hours and hours of security camera video, and we continue to reference that video while working on our leads. So let's talk about since the disappearance of Michael. 
when I tell you our investigation has been intense and daily, I can assure you that it has been. Uh, since the, the disappearance, detectives and, and investigators across the country have logged tens of thousands of man hours to bring this case to conclusion. We've gathered an immense amount of data and continue to work through it with experts from several agencies. We've applied for and served over 27 search warrants, uh, but that may seem low, but I'm telling you that we've also performed, uh, you know, probably triple that in mutual consent type searches. So the search warrant and consent searches we, we've performed have yielded uh, high volumes of data and search warrants are still being written today. The data requires expertise from law enforcement partners, and this takes a lot of time to decipher. We continue to use all of our investigative resources to include that of the Idaho State Police and our friends at the FBI. Further, the Idaho State Police and the FBI have assigned investigators to work specifically with the City of Fruitland Police Department on this case, and our partnership is healthy and strong. We continue to call upon the Idaho Mountain Search and Rescue teams uh, with their specialized canine units, and we've received some recent leads that have put us out in the area again, uh, searching more acreage. And I can't thank them enough for, for what they've done for us. Uh, on a moment's notice, they're jumping and running for us. Although unsuccessful with these, with these searches, we can't stop and we appreciate the continued support from all of our members. And um, I would tell you that the number of acres searched will continue to grow. So in our efforts to develop a detailed timeline of events leading up to Michael's appearance, we processed over 1,000 leads. So we cleared many- Sorry, you are right. Uh, who said that in chat now? There's one more, there's one more press conference, I think that took place right after this, which was, you know, no, I just want to see. I think so. If you have the link, please send it to me on grizzlytruecrime at gmail.com. I'm looking as we talk here. Any of these leads, but not all have been cleared because some require assistance from out of state, uh, more investigators, and, 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 and probably more importantly, just time to work these things through to make sure we can bring each, each lead to a conclusion. This process is exhaustive and it takes a lot of time, and we believe someone out there will ultimately, ultimately provide us with some information that'll help us solve this case. It's important to note that as we continue to refine our timeline, um, we now believe that Michael disappeared in a smaller window of time, and that's probably between the uh, time of 6.40 p.m. and 7 o'clock p.m. on the 27th. Earlier in the investigation, uh, we needed assistance in identifying two vehicles and two pedestrians that were seen in the area around the time of Michael's disappearance. So you guys need to know that we positively identified the, the blue Dodge Avenger we were looking for and the man that we see that we saw jogging in that area. Those those have both been identified, vetted and investigated and um, to an end. So the white Honda Pilot, 2016 to 18 Honda Pilot that we have leaving the area at approximately that time. Um, you know, again, we believe that it belongs to a resident, but we haven't quite been able to to clear that and verify that. Um, so that's kind of still an outstanding for us. Uh, the man seen walking through the area of the splash pad of Crestview Park leading up to the time of Michael's disappearance, he's not come forward and he has not been identified. So the man's described as a white male adult, late 20s, early 30s. He was seen wearing black shorts, a white t-shirt with cut off sleeves, dark colored shoes and a hat. So I need to make it perfectly clear that he is not a suspect, but we need to talk to him so we can determine his whereabouts and see if he witnessed anything that would be helpful uh, in this investigation. So I plan on releasing the photograph of that individual in my Facebook official posting later today. So you'll all have. So yes, the other press conference that I do have pinned, sorry, is on August 24th, 2022. That's what I can see, if that's the one you guys are referring to there. And just to show you this picture again, the picture that they're referring to is this picture above me here. Sorry, that we went over earlier. This one right here. They say the man seen walking the area of the splash pad of Crestview Park leading up to the time of Michael's disappearance. He has not come forward. He's not been identified. So the man is described as a white male, adult, late 20s, early 30s, seen wearing black shorts, a white t-shirt with cut off sleeves, dark colored shoes and a hat. So I need to make it perfectly clear that he's not a suspect, but we need to talk to him so we can determine his whereabouts, right? To see if he knows anything. So that is what they're talking about right now. And this is again from July 22nd, 2022. Uh, you need to understand this is a multifaceted investigation. So many leads are working. We're working many leads at the same time. So some leads are temporarily abandoned as priority leads come in, and that's happened to us on multiple occasions. Once abandoned and we, and we clear the priority leads, then we pick those things right back up and we're working on them again until we can work them to conclusion, right? It takes an intense effort and a lot of work to document all of the leads as they're coming in. And at the conclusion of this investigation, I'm hopeful we'll find the, and I'm hopeful we'll find the answers. It's important that our case is organized and very strong. So I will tell you 
that this, this is a criminal investigation. So with that, you need to know that the majority of our investi invest investigative efforts just cannot be made public at this time. As members of the community, we agonize with the family and we've dedicated our resources to bring a Michael home. So we believe the continued distribution of this story will generate more attention and tips that can be investigated by our department and our partners. So anyone having information regarding Michael's disappearance, I would ask that you please reach out to us. No tidbit of information is too benign or too obscure. It just helps us process the overall picture. We appreciate the efforts of the community, members of the media partners, who keep this case at the forefront by promoting and sharing the story. And we encourage all of you to continue sharing the official poster from the Idaho Missing Persons Clearinghouse. I'd like to introduce a new partnership today. Uh, it's called the Homeward Bound Program. The program was first started by Trooper Renee Padgett with the Washington State Patrol in 2005. She was working with the WSP Commercial Vehicle Division. Trooper Padgett worked with, with then the Gordon Trucking with a vision that posters of missing children being displayed on sides of semi-trailers traveling around the country could bring much needed awareness and possibly recovery. With the help of Tanea Parmeter with the Idaho State Police, we've been able to partner with the Homeward Bound Program, which will carry Michael's information across the country on semi-trailers. As designed by Trooper Padgett, this will expand the exposure of Michael's case on the interstates, highways, and roads of our country, which will bring new leads and potentially help us bring Michael home. We're hoping to have semi-trailers outfitted with Michael's information near the end of August and get those on the road. just want to pause there. Princess Skywalker says, uh, question Grizzlies, I saw something in the chat earlier about the people in the house. They're digging at those people who were not living there when he went missing. Is this true? I don't know, but from the background checks I've done, it seems like they've been living there since late 2020. So in, if that's the case, based on the background checks I've done, then they were living there at the time. Um, yes, and, and the male has been in custody since May of 2022 on unrelated charges, and his wife has been taken into custody November 11th, 2022. We don't know for what. Thank you so much for being here. I would ask anyone with any information to continue to send tips to findmichael.org. If you are out of state and you have information that you think would help us bring Michael home, I'm encouraging you to contact your local law enforcement team. They will then get in touch with us and we can start working those leads as they come in. Please share what you have. You can also contact Crime Stoppers at 343-COPS. You can remain anonymous. Uh, the reward for uh, the information leading to Michael's safe return has grown to $52,992. This fund has been maintained by the city of Fruitland. It's secure. This will remain in place until Michael comes home. I just ask that you continue to pray for Michael, for strength for his family, and the steadfast resolve for those who are working to bring him home. Thank you for standing firm with Michael's family and our continued law enforcement efforts. So with that, we'll stand for a few questions. Go ahead. It's very soft. You know, I, I would tell you that um, it's very hard to hear the questions. It always is with these press conferences, you know. Um, but let's listen to the answer that we can try and figure out what the hell they said. People like to deal in absolutes. And there is nothing about this case that is an absolute. So we will continue to investigate all aspects and all avenues in this case. And, uh, you know, as I've said before, the, the family continues to be extremely uh, cooperative and uh, working with our investigation. And so, yeah, I mean, that's just kind of where we're at. Tristan, uh, you know, due to the number of searches uh, with train teams and the acreages searched, that is the reason why, and, and with, without success, that is the reason why we, you know, there's a, there's a possibility or a higher probability of abduction. That's what led us to that. Uh, again, uh, you know, as we continue to work through this thing, there, there are still no absolutes. So when I say everything's on the table, it's still on the table. Okay. You know, we're looking into that, uh, but I think, like I said, you know, these leads um, and, and what we're doing, it's happening at the same time. So, um, yes, we're looking into fr friends and family close to the Vaughns, and we're looking outside as well. Yes, yes, it has. So, you know, there's a number of theories. And as a matter of fact, we develop many theories throughout the week as well. Um, and so once we develop those theories, you know, plausible um, situations, uh, then we 
vigorously get after that. And so uh, I, I certainly don't want to discourage um, any information that, that's coming into the Fruitland Police Department. Because I'm just going to pause this. Um, Jeanette keeps asking, when will there be a press conference? We don't know if there will even be one today. The chief huff that you can picture here is going to update the media that's out there outside the house while they're digging in the backyard there today. He said he'll update the media at about uh, 1 p.m. Fruitland time, which is in about 45 minutes. He did not say he's going to update the public at that point. He did not announce a press conference. So I doubt there'll be one today. But if there is, you know, I'll be here for it. I'll be here with you guys. I'm not going to wait here for hours and hours to see if that happens. We're going to cover this so that everyone can, you know, do the homework, look at the press conferences chronologically. We have one more to go over after this, I believe. If there's any more recently, I can see one from August um, this year as well. So we'll go over that right after this. Um, we, we've gone over them all from the time that Michael Bourne went missing right until present day. That's what we're doing. And I am monitoring the news um, while we're doing this so that I can tell you if there's anything else happening. All right. Because the leads have been, uh, you know, we're over a thousand leads now and uh, we have to have that. I mean, I, I believe that, you know, in the midst of that, uh, there's going to be that tid tidbit of information uh, that breaks this case and helps us bring him home. So. That being said, uh, do you think that the last press conference we had in November, do you think that uh, nothing in the police as much information as the public line over as much information that this case reports uh, that led to the people coming up with these theories? Yeah, I think it could be. But you, you also need to understand that we have, we have an obligation. And in order to keep our case organized and strong when this thing is concluded, it's important that we hold that information close, at least at this point, right? Uh, there'll be a time for that, for public disclosure. And, and, and right now it just isn't. So that's the reason for uh, my hesitancy to put out updates, um, because we are in the daily work of this investigation, and it's daily. So um, while it's certainly not a distraction, um, you know, if I have significant information that needs to be passed, then I'll get it out there to you. But I just, you know, we're just working this thing on a daily basis. So, you know, I, I'm not going to really get into too deep on the persons of interest, um, but I will tell you there are multiple. Okay. Are there any uh, people that you interviewed or searched that have been uncooperative? Yeah, there have been. Without getting into too much detail, um, I will tell you properties, vehicles, um, electronic devices, you know, everything you think we would be serving search warrants on, more than likely we've served search warrants on. So. And then you mentioned there were multiple uh, persons of interest. No. Okay, for everyone in the chat asking if I'm going to be deep diving the people living at that house, not at the stage because we don't know anything about if they're connected to this or not besides them being tenants of that house. Um, that's all we know so far. So as you know, don't worry. The internet will go at them. <laughs> I just want to be cautious. I just want to see what happens. Um, just observe. And when we know any more or when we hear something from law enforcement, then hell yeah. Well, today, as I say, it would be an introduction to those of you who've never heard of the case and for those of you who've been following the case from day one or just even followed it a little bit this would be a recap of all the information that we have so far while i'm updating you in between as well of what's breaking now in the news um i can see one of the lead reporters is doing a twitter video right now it's pretty grainy and stuff i'm monitoring what's going on there and i will play that for you as well after these press conferences so that we know exactly what's happening uh, they did say that the police will be updating the media out there. They didn't say the public, and that will be in about 45 minutes or so. So we'll watch out for that. Uh, so far, they said that, you know, they want to dig more. They're going to dig out that entire backyard to see if they can find Michael Vaughn, which is just so sad to think about, you know. But at the end of the day, I know that we want um, closure. We want Michael to be found. Of course, we were hoping, and we still hope, that he'll be found alive. But the police are saying that they are searching for remains in the backyard. So I'll keep you posted on that. So our day-to-day -day, um, efforts start with an intelligence briefing first thing in the morning. Uh, we go over aspects of the case and current leads that we're working uh, to try to develop new strategies. We pull in our partners from the FBI and the Idaho State Police, um, and, and we just we start with a direction for that day. And uh, every day starts the same. Uh, but I will tell you, it, it, it has been this way since the day Michael went missing, right? We do the same thing every day and um, it's intense. 
And so we're, we're able to clear a lot of leads that way. We're making a lot of progress, um, working through the data. And uh, like we have been from the beginning, you know, uh, that's kind of where I'll leave that. In the investigation, have you been able to decide this on the other missing or abducted? Is that similar? You know, we haven't. Although I know there are some similarities, uh, such as the Summer Wells case, um, but we just haven't been able to tie that to that case. So. All right. Well, if, uh, if I don't have any more questions, I, I really, again, you guys, I appreciate you. Um, you guys have been phenomenal. My local media outlets, I can't thank you enough. Um, you know, Les, you're awesome. So I appreciate you. And, um, you know, we'll keep after it. Um, my intent, um, just so you guys know, is once we get the um, word on our Homeward Bound program and when those trucks are going to be outfitted, that we'll set up another time that we can do an unveiling on our truck with Michael's information, maybe bring you guys out at that point again, just to, you know, view the truck and, um, you know, we'll get something out to the public when it comes to that as well. So, but again, you guys are awesome. I appreciate you. Thank you. So. Okay. So that was the press conference from July, 2022. What I want to do now, uh, this lady's still on video. So let's look at that. Um, let's put this over here. Let's bring this lady across. Alexandra Duggan, she's updating us minute by minute. Um, she said, I'm gonna go live on a video right now. I figured it out. So let's first listen to what she did here for two minutes. Um, I don't know how to do this. Okay, so <laughs> I don't know how to do this. I'm trying. Um. I don't know if anyone can hear me. <laughs> Let's see. Can someone tell me if they can hear me? <laughs> Hello, testing. So was that it's his full intention of excavating the entire backyard. He said the... Um, Hold on. Let's see. Okay. He said the backhoe doesn't contaminate anything. They need to get soil out of there. So it's going to scrape layers away until they can get down. They're going, um, their intention is to go three to feet deep in the soil. Um, they may not be finished today, but the work is going to continue. He will have further updates at one o'clock our time. Um, and he said the rumors about the next door neighbors are not accurate and they are being cooperative. So they are not a focus of the investigation. And that is the update. Okay. So if anyone has questions, just let me know. And hopefully this works. <laughs> okay, bye. Okay, so that was that update over there. And then here she's doing a video update. Investigators inside the backyard right now. Um, Sorry, it is a little grainy. just want to see, can I go back at all? I talked to a couple neighbors and it's just, I think that they're just kind of keeping their heads down right now. Ooh, the signal's all over the place. <laughs> that sucks. Now just waiting for updates like we all are, so. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so. I guess I will come back. I will come back at one o'clock. Okay. I just want to put that off there. So yeah, there's no other updates um, beyond them saying police chief JD Huff just told us they plan on excavating the entire backyard. Their plan is to dig three to four feet deep. He'll have further updates for us around 1 PM, which is in about 35 minutes. That would be for the media. If we are still here, then, then of course I'll update you on that. We'll see if um, Alexandra goes live again on video or you know what happens if we're still here but what i want to show you right now would be michael vaughn investigation update so let's look at this hold on I'm just going to remove this for a second bring this over here i have to just switch the i've got <laughs> three screens to monitor here what i want to do is just quickly boost this volume as well thank thank you again for being here to go over this all with me so this is from august 24th 2022 the most recent press conference, I believe. August. Oh, wait. August 24th, 2022. Okay. So now we're going to do that. Yeah. 
Okay. What's that? Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. My dinky little toe. And Cam. And Cam can be just to the left of you. Yes. Still here. I'm just going to go forward to exactly when they start. Okay, uh, yeah. good afternoon, everybody. I just wanted to start by thanking the media for being here. Um, we can't thank you enough for continue, uh, continuing your coverage of this case, um, as we know how much it's infect, uh, impacted this community um, and the family. Uh, so thank you all for being here. Um, I want to start out with some introductions today. Obviously, I'm going to shorten it up because we have uh, quite a few people uh, representing here today. But I'm going to start over here with my FPD staff. Um, I've got uh, Sheriff Andy Creech with the Payette County Sheriff's Office. I've got Chief Gary Marshall with the Payette City Police Department. And I've got Chief Mike Eway from the Ontario Police Department. On my left here, I've got Captain Cy Armstrong with FPD. I've got uh, Kerry Gordon with the Washington State Patrol. Um, Cam, what? Sahota. I'm sorry, Cam. Cam Sahota with uh, Camway Transportation. Uh, Brandy, Tyler, and Bob, uh, the Vaughn family here with us today. So thank you. Sorry about that, Cam. I'd just like to quickly cover uh, the context of this case. And I know I do it every time, but we may have some new listeners and some people just kind of tuning into this thing um, as it's, uh, it's huge. Um, so since the evening of July 27, 2021, the Fruitland Police Department, the Idaho State Police, the FBI, Idaho law enforcement agencies, and law enforcement agencies across... Sorry to pause there, but yes, that was a news reporter that we just heard from earlier, which I believe she is with this uh, main news channel, KTVB. Um, so yes, news reporter out there. That's what we listened to earlier. Now we listen to a press conference from August 24th, 2022. Across the country have investigated the disappearance of then five-year-old Michael Vaughn. We haven't stopped uh, every day. We have unfinished business and our investigation uh, remains very, very active. We know that Michael Joseph Vaughn was last seen near his residence on Southwest 9th Street at approximately 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday, July 27th of 2021. Law enforcement received the first 911 call at approximately 7.21 p.m. and we issued an endangered missing person alert to the area and to area residents seeking the community to help be on the lookout. Information was sent to the law enforcement uh, nationwide through the National Crime Information Center regarding Michael's disappearance and he was entered into the state of Idaho Missing Persons Clearinghouse and National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. The Fruitland Police Department, Payette Police Department, Payette County Sheriff's Office, and over 100 law enforcement officers and federal from federal and state local agencies converged on our small town of Fruitland that night. Physical search efforts were conducted by experts from the Idaho Fish and Game, the Idaho Mountain Search and Rescue, National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, both Fruitland and Sand Hollow Fire Departments, and immense citizen help. Our search included over 3,000 acres of farm ground, 29 miles of riverbank along the Snake River, 250 residential homes, outbuildings, septic tanks, garbage cans, vehicles, irrigation ditches, and drain canals. We used fixed wing aircraft, helicopters, sophisticated drones. We used boats, sonar, specialized canines, kayaks. They've literally used everything to search for Michael Vaughn. It's amazing to hear everything that they've done, right? And paragliders. We served over 30 search warrants and we continue to review hundreds of hours of security and other data. Um, and we've logged, um, tens of thousands of hours and as we continue to work this case. Our, de our department has processed over 1,200 leads, uh, many of which we've been able to clear, uh, many of which we are st still working on. Um, we've had a lot of law enforcement across the entire country and internationally help us chase down some of these leads. I'd like to note um, that after a year long thorough investigation, uh, the family is not a focus of our investigation at this point. They are continuing to fully cooperate with us uh, in all of our efforts um, from the investigation standpoint. Today, as members of this community, we continue to agonize with the family and we continue to dedicate our resources to bringing Michael home safely. We believe that the continued distribution of this story will generate more attention and more tips and help us get this thing, uh, get some resolution to this case. So there's no tip that's too small or benign that we won't investigate. 
With the help of Tenea Parmeter with the Idaho State Police, we're excited to partner with the Washington State Patrol's Homeward Bound Program and Camway Transportation uh, to carry Michael's information across the country on semi-trailers like the one I have behind me. We know that exposure along the interstates and highways and the roads of this country will help bring new leads and potentially help us bring Michael home safely. So at this time, I'd like to introduce Carrie Gordon. She's with the Washington State Patrol, and she's going to be talking a bit about the Homeward Bound Program and our exciting new partnership. Carrie? Thank you, Chief. Um, as the Chief mentioned, I work for the Washington State Patrol. I manage the um, Missing Persons Clearinghouse, and I'm the Amber Alert Coordinator for Washington State. I'm essentially Tanea's counterpart in Washington. Um, so the Homeward Bound Program was actually started by um, the late Trooper Renee Paget. She um, sadly lost a battle with blood cancer a couple of years ago, but this program was Renee's vision, and um, it was brought to fruition in 2006 uh, with then Gordon Transportation. Um, and it, with Gordon, the program featured, at one time, there were 27 children featured in the program. Um, and each child had between three and five trailers traveling around the country with Gordon at the time. So a lot of exposure um, for these cases and a lot of tips and a lot of new information generated for these cases for law enforcement. And that's our goal. Um, so I'm here to uh, continue with Renee's passion. And so we're very excited to be able to partner with Idaho and bring some more attention to Michael's case and to help his family um, spread the word and get information out about Michael. So to us, the important part of this entire program is the coordination of partnerships that we have with all of the various law enforcement agencies that are represented up here, as well as Idaho State Police, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, and um, our uh, various states clearinghouses that border uh, your state here. Uh, the so I'm just going to pause. If anyone wants to send me an email or message, it's grizzlytruecrime at gmail.com. Please know I don't have Instagram anymore. Uh, Facebook messages, I hardly check those. I get too many of them. Thousand, thousand requests from people that I don't even know at all. So if you want to reach me, the best place is email, grizzlytruecrime at gmail.com. Please don't just send me links. Please put in a subject line, write what it's about uh, so that I actually know. Otherwise, I just go straight to spam folders with all my settings because I do get a lot of spam. Trailers behind me are going to be seen by millions of travelers on highways around the country. Um, and so imagine how many eyes are going to see this trailer uh, as it travels uh, throughout its journey. Um, and this is one of what will be uh, eventually three trailers that will feature Michael um, and Cam, who is going to speak right, right after me here shortly. Um, and his company have committed to this program for as long as it takes and for as many trailers as we need to bring attention to these missing child cases around the country. Um, it's, a, it's a fantastic partnership. We're very proud of what we're doing. And I just want to ensure the families and law enforcement that we are not going to stop. That is what we do. That is why we do what we do every single day. Um, I've been doing this, this particular job for 10 years. I've been with the patrol for 31 years. And this is the most important job I've ever had. And the importance is that these are our children. These are kids. And they're our most valuable asset that we have in our communities. And we need to make sure that we provide them with the most attention that we can give them and bring them home to their families who are waiting for them every single day, every minute. So sorry to pause again. Surya, welcome to the chat. Welcome everyone who's new to my channel. My name is Gisela Kay. I'm from South Africa. I live in the Netherlands. I love true crime. Started my channel at the end of July, well, sorry, end of June 2021. And here we are now together. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for subscribing. If you wouldn't mind, you guys, if you could just like the video and share it with hashtag find Michael Vaughn, bring Michael Vaughn home. Those would be very helpful. Um, remember, his surname is V-A-U-G-H-A-N, if you could share that like that. So thank you so much. Let's continue to watch this press conference, which was from August 24th, 2022. I'd like to introduce Cam Sahoda. He is the owner of Camway Transportation, and he has been a very valuable partner to me. And I also want to recognize Cam's wife, Harneet, who is not here today, but she's been my logistics contact and to help me get these trailers on the road and to get them at events like this today. So, Cam. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, uh, Chief. Um, Camway Transportation is a trucking company and freight brokers based up in Blaine, Washington. And uh, since we started the company in 2008, We've always been uh, centered around giving back to the communities we serve. And when the opportunity to be part of the Homeward Bound program uh, was presented to us, uh, I thought it was a, an amazing opportunity and something that really aligned with our values as a company. And um, moving freight and moving trucks down the road is something we do on a day in, day out basis. Uh, but being able to do a little more, a little extra, uh, give families hope, bring awareness uh, through the featuring children on the side of our trailers is something that's near and dear to myself, my wife, my other partner, our whole company. Uh, we think it's a, an amazing cause and 
they, we bring additional hope and we think that there's uh, through this awareness that we can assist uh, these different agencies that are working very hard to try to try to help the families uh, and bring uh, kids home. So we're really, really excited to be part of this. Um, and um, just the, the hope it gives everybody, you know, um, it's a big world. Um, we're all parents and um, anything that we can do, anything we can do to bring awareness, anything we can do to bring uh, hope to these, to these families um, is, I think it's, it's uh, worth its weight in gold. So we're very thankful to uh, be here today and uh, uh, be part of this program. And uh, we want to thank everybody for coming out and the media to uh, to bring additional awareness to this and Idaho State Patrol and Fruitland Police Department and all the other agencies. So we're going to watch this while I'm monitoring the breaking news, if there is anything to share. As we know, they're busy digging in that backyard. We'll look at the map one more time after this press conference. And then I also want to show you this website that Nevertheless True Crime created, because it tells us a little bit more about Michael Vaughn, you know, what he liked. As you guys said in the chat, his favorite color um, is blue. So we'll just look at a few little facts as well right after this. Uh, thank you, Kathy, for becoming a member. Thank you and welcome, everyone. Agencies mentioned Washington State Patrol um, for doing this and, and going above and beyond. So thank you. Yes. Thanks, Cam. So I'd just like to uh, follow up, Cam. I just want to tell you how thankful we are and grateful uh, for your continued generosity um, and your involvement in this case. Um, I appreciate your long, long-standing partnership with Homeward Bound, and, and it, it, it's an incredible program. And um, I think it's really going to help us, and um, I can't thank you enough. Um, for the Vaughn family, um, this has been an extremely long and emotional road. You don't walk that road alone, right? So I could never fathom how you and your family have suffered. However, I assure you that the Fruitland Police Department will continue to earnestly investigate this case. And everyone here today is a part of your community and a part of your family. We will never stop looking. You need to know that. And so with that, um, I'll take a few questions if you guys have any for me. Go ahead. Can you elaborate a little on where the crux of the problem is? Um, you know, I think I'm going to defer that to Carrie or Cam. Um, yeah, so the trucks will be um, traveling all over the place. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm back. Uh, the, the trucks uh, will be traveling uh, all over the U.S. and Canada, but our primary routes are the western seven states. And uh, so this particular unit is on its way to Denver, Colorado after our unveiling today. And we'll probably come back through Idaho again uh, from Denver back to Washington. So I, so I have a follow-up question. Uh, so, yes. so the western seven states, I'm assuming they're Idaho, Washington, Oregon, California. Sorry to pause again. Um, Colleen, I will be showing map time again. and We'll look at the yard again. And we'll look at pictures as well that's being shared on Twitter right after this. So make sure you hang in there. If you've seen this already, just hang in there. We're going to finish this up. It's seven minutes more, and it's on 1.25 speed. So they're taking questions now, of course. And this was the latest press conference, I believe, which is from August. Hold on. I'm waiting for my own damn scroll bar here. <laughs> this one was from August 24th, 2022. Okay. Utah, Arizona. Arizona and Colorado. Yes, thank you. And also, so you said, I believe mean, Carrie said that, that this look here is going to be on three trailers for now? Yes. Okay. And um, I'd love to be able to read my own handwriting. That would be fantastic. <laughs> um, is this a unique, do other transportation companies do this in, in, in the United States that we're aware of, or is this a unique operation? Um, yeah, I don't think any other companies do it or of any scale that you're aware of. That, that we're aware of, but we think that it's a, a wonderful idea and uh, it's good. Uh, it's good to get the word out, and we're going to continue. As Carrie mentioned to uh, to spread the word and, and, and commit 100 percent to the program. And I had one more actually. So, is this the first time, Cam, that, that you all have done this, or have you worked on other cases before as well? So right now, there's 15 trailers, uh, including this one trailer um, that are with seven different children that are uh, are featured. Uh, right now, and then in uh, in the next month, there'll be two more trailers uh, that feature. Uh, um, Certain cases. Yes, my, my, uh, Michael's uh, Michael's uh, picture. There'll be two more trailers, exact replica to this. And how many years have you been doing this for? Uh, we started this in 2018, 2018 I believe. Okay. Yes. And uh, and we'll be happy to continue to expand the program. Right. And are these trailers going to carry typical cargo, or are these dedicated to? Getting the message out. Uh, no, they do. Uh, they, we're, we're, our company mainly specializes in food and retail. Uh, right now, this trailer is full of ice cream. Uh, it's destined to Denver, Colorado. How appropriate. And, yes. Um, and uh, so, and uh, so we haul all kinds of different food stuff. So, if you're partnering with them to get Michael's face out across the U.S., is that because you believe that Michael was taken somewhere outside of Idaho? You know, I think the best answer for that is, is we don't know where Michael is at this point. So, could he be out of state? Yes. 
So um, I think the best way to get Michael's information out there is definitely going to be on uh, these forms of transport that uh, travel from state to state, potentially into other countries. So. Well, um, I don't know if you can speak to this, but uh, there's been rumors that Michael Sent was traced near the freeway. Uh, is that is there anything you can tell us about that? I'm not going to comment on that. And at this time, what are their latest uh, message to the public? What's what's the latest they want the public to know as the search continues? You know, as we uh, continue this search, uh, the public just needs to know that we want them to be aware and vigilant. I mean, we're still receiving tips on a daily basis. I mean, every day we're getting new tips. And so we do know that the message is getting out there. I just want them to remain vigilant. Um, the last thing we want is for, um, you know, uh, for the coverage of this case to fall off um, because Michael's still out there and somebody knows something. Somebody knows something. Either information has been omitted um, or they're just not bringing it forward. So uh, I would continue to, continue to encourage those people that have any idea or have any information that may lead us to the safe return, that they bring that information forward. Uh, the, rewards, the reward stands. It's still active. Um, yeah, so I'll leave it at that. Any other questions? Uh, is there like a solid lead right now that you're actively working that looks promising to you? You know, um, I hate to be so cagey with my answers, but it is a criminal investigation. I will just tell you that there are um, a multitude of plausible leads. So, um, and, and it's just something that it's a painstaking um, task. And we're in here every single day. Every single day we're working this case. So. Is there any way that you could publicly confirm that Michael was knocking on neighbor's doors when he went missing, or is he not speaking up? You know, I, I'm just not going to talk about the details of our investigation. So. So real quick, if we don't have any more questions, I did want to just take a brief moment um, and allow Brandy um, to make a brief statement. I believe she has uh, something that she would like to, to say. So I think we'll just take a moment and do that. Brandy, if I can get you for a minute. This is Michael's mother and father. Um, thank you all for being here today for Michael and our family. This is amazing and beautiful. And we just, we want to thank all of all of you all of your the officers all of the agencies you guys have just keep you keep working so hard and we're gonna get him home we're not gonna stop we're gonna find him and every outside agency that's helping thank you the blessing and to whoever has michael or knows anything and it has information about michael Please, please come forward. We need him home. We, we need we need our baby. Please. Thank you to the community and extended communities that continue to support our family and law enforcement, all of the agencies that are helping to bring Michael home. They stand strong and they stand with us and we stand with them. So if you are seeing this, please, if you know something, please, if you you know anything please say something you can be anonymous there's so many avenues please everyone help us get michael home and monkey we love you baby you're coming home none of us are going to give up the promise thank you all for being here today thank you thank you, thank you brandy I do also see that this hashtag is used, bring hashtag bring monkey home. So you can use that as well. If you like and share the video, you can hashtag bring monkey home, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Reddit. We have a Reddit um, feature as well, or a Grizzly Reddit page. So find that if you want to. Everything is on my website as well. And yeah, so if you use this hashtag bring monkey home, that will also be helpful. So with that, um, if we don't have any more questions, I'm going to go ahead and conclude. I'd also like to let the, uh, my media partners know that uh, we do have a B-roll uh, from Homeward Bound that we can get a link to you guys. Um, we can get it to you after this press conference. And then um, I also want to let you know that um, the truck will probably be leaving in roughly 10 minutes. So if you wanted to make sure your visuals are set up for that uh, th at that time. Other than that, I think we'll conclude. Thank you. Appreciate you all. Yep. Okay. So that was the most recent uh, press conference that we saw. So let's remove this for a second. And let's get that map rolling out again. So just if anyone missed it, I'll just show you again. Let's just close that. And, um, okay, put it on the screen. Okay, so here we go. You guys want the map time song again? I think we're good, right? <laughs> okay, so let me take the banner off over here. All right. So, and for those of you who did join the last pajama party, we will have one very, very soon.
I mean, I'd love to have one right now, right after this, but uh, I just want to monitor the news and see what's happening. But we will have it soon, so don't worry about it. You, you will get the link. Always check the community tab as well. So now if we look at uh, Michael Vaughan's home, see, I don't know exactly which house it is here. They said it's on the corner of, of these two streets. I'm assuming it's this one. Is that correct for anyone who knows exactly which house it is? Don't go bother the family, though. Thank you, Elmo's World, for joining. Thank you, everyone, for joining. If you struggle because you're on an iPhone, the link to join is on grizzlytruecrime.com. All right. You are in, Elmo's World. You're in. Welcome. Okay. So check the Members Only playlist and check the Community tab as well. So Michael's home is right here. In the, initially, when he went missing, they already had um, tracking dogs and, you know, as you heard, everything out there, drones, dogs, everything. And the dogs could track uh, Michael Vaughn's scent up to the end of the road, and then they say it just abruptly stopped, which would then, one could speculate that it um, sounds like an abduction took place. You know, that maybe he was walking along here. Neighbors also said he was seen walking outside. Um, so... Again, that's just rumor, um, but apparently walking around outside and the scent stopped right here. So now that the house where they're digging today, and they started this yesterday, is that this 1102 Red Wing Street, the reason I'm showing it like that is because I think it's important that the address is correct because um, I wouldn't normally just put the address out there just like that. Um, but firstly, the people, the tenants who were staying there, the man uh, has been in custody since May of 2022 on unrelated charges, and his wife has been taken into custody November 11th, 2022. And yesterday, I just saw the wrong address being shared a lot and an elderly couple being doxxed and bothered a lot and dragged through the mud. So uh, we went right down to the ground. So you could see here from all the videos we've seen, this is the backyard that they're searching over here, right? So yeah, there's like a, a shed back there as well. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So if we go back this way. So this is the backyard that they're searching with those uh, backhoes, as they call it, the, the tractor. Yes, 1102 Red Wing, exactly. All right. Thank you to Anne Kath Dub. This is the most respectful community here. Grizzlies, yes. And to everyone who's having a special membership anniversary, welcome and thank you so much. And, and thank you for supporting, whether it's one month, three months, six months, a year. Thank you so, so much. Welcome to everyone who's joining. Um, okay, so that's where they are digging today. I'm going to show you photos of that now. And then, actually, I'm not too sure what the splash park is, but they said this, I think it's here. Is it here? Yeah, it must be here. They said that that man with a grainy photo that they showed us, they still want to just identify him, you know, to talk to him so they can figure out if he saw anything. Um, if you missed that, I'm talking about this right here. Okay. Um, this man, this picture, they saw him walking through the area of the splash pad of Crestview Park. So I'm assuming they mean this thing right here. Right? Can you even put this Google man there? Can you go there? No, he can't go there. He can't really go there. I don't know what we can see from here. Ah, okay. We can see this. So I think he was walking somewhere around here. I don't even know in exactly which direction either. They didn't say. I'd have to do a deep dive on the map time. Um, but yes, as I say, oh, sorry, right here. So they don't believe he's a suspect. It's just someone who could have seen what happened because he was walking down the street in whichever direction around this area. I don't know. I just feel like this way, but it could be the other way. And so, yeah, this house where they're searching, look how close it is, you know? If I just do this and take the park out, it's 0.4 of a mile. 0.4, less than half a mile away. Damn. Yeah, Van Lechim says, yes, that's the splash pad. Thank you. <laughs> Stefan says, naughty little Google man. At our next pajama party, we will we will swear about it. <laughs> we will say all the naughty words. All right. Ken Dalton says, hi, guys. Any news or updates on the search? Uh, not at this moment, except that they are searching. Their plan is to dig three to four feet deep. And so they are they're still searching. There's no news yet if they found anything. Um, there's actually eight minutes to go. 
uh, before they say they, they're going to update the media. So I'm showing you the map again so you can see just how close this house, even if it's, uh, could you get there this way? I think that is the best way. That's the quickest way is like this to get to that house. Um, I'm not sharing too much on the tenants that were living there at this time because we don't know anything about them, you know, like if there's any involvement whatsoever. They were living there from approximately October 2020 from what I can see. Um, so they were living there at the time that Michael Vaughan disappeared, July 27, 2021. But we don't know anything about them, if they're suspects, if they're involved or not. Um, so I'm just going to just stay cautious and observant and let you guys know if there is any news, breaking news announcements from law enforcement. Welcome to Tasha and everyone. Brandy, sorry if I miss anyone. Welcome, everyone. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Mods, for welcoming all the new members as well. All right. So that's that. That's the map. And then if I go here, I just want to show you. Where is this one? Here. Here. We'll just drag this over here. I'll show you. The the pictures that they'll be sharing here. Maggie O'Mara has been sharing this. So she's also with KTVB7. They are looking for possible remains after a credible tip. Their plan is to dig three to four feet deep. Huff will have an update at 1 p.m. My thoughts are with the family, the community, law enforcement officers, and our crew on scene while they wait for answers. So that's updates for the media. They didn't say they're having a press conference or anything like that. Um, we'll see what happens there, you know. Laura Hobbs says, bought you a cup of coffee. Enjoy. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Oh, my word. Thank you so much to all the coffee buyers. Buymeacoffee.com slash K. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the coffees. I do need coffee. I love coffee and I need it <laughs> for all my deep dives and, you know, all the work that I do. So, yes. Okay. So here's one of the pictures um, of all the law enforcement officers out there. Here you can see the tractor, the caterpillar, the backhoe. Uh, you can see Michael Vaughn is spelt like this. This is how you can share it. Hashtag Michael Vaughn is a really great hashtag to use if you do share this as well. And if we look here, uh, you can go to Twitter. If you follow me, it's at Grizzly Gizzler is my handle. And you just go to hashtag Michael Vaughn and latest. And there you will see all the latest updates. So, yeah, latest. They say Michael Vaughn search continues as crews excavate Fruitland Backyard. Okay. So that's the news there. Here was a video update, which I do want to, I just want to see. Uh, let's just have a look at this. Can't hear a thing. Hello. I'm going to go to that lady. Oh, this one. I have Abby with me. Um, you can see back here. So these are updates from reporters from the main news channel that's covering this case out there. So let's listen to what they said here on video. Here is where the tape is. The road is closed off. Um, the update from the chief, um, Chief Huff from Fruitland is that they are, their plan is to excavate the entire backyard. They're gonna go three to four feet down until they hit, I think you said hard like pan or something. Um, and that it's their full intention to excavate the entire backyard. So nothing's going to go unturned. They're going to like every inch. Um, and he also said that the, the backhoe that they're using, a lot of people had concerns about like if that contaminates evidence, he said, absolutely not. Um, that it is just a way to remove like top layers of soil um, so it's it's just peeling back layers, basically, is what they're doing. And then um, there's going to be another update at one. He said, if I find anything, I'll let you know. Um, and also that the neighbors that live on the other side. So this is not um, this is not the house, but on the other side, I can go this way. Um, the neighbors that live on the other side around the house they're excavating, which is right here on the other side. Um, they are not a focus of the investigation and they're being fully cooperative. Um, but right now they were just um, basically putting dirt into a dumpster that they excavated with the backhoe. So, um, yeah, that's the update. They said it once, so that should be in the next minute or so. 
Chief Huff has released information to reporters, but he's also been very careful with the information he's sharing at the moment. He doesn't want to release information if the house was vacant prior to the search, and he doesn't want to say anything about the tip. Okay, interesting. What? The latest Michael Bourne info we've got there, the video update we've got there. Interesting. I wonder what's going on. Right? Thank you, Rose, for sharing my stream. Okay. So I'm just looking if there's any other pictures. We've seen these pictures and we're waiting to see. Uh, okay, so they're sharing their people that lived at the house. You can get a quick glimpse. There you go. These are people that lived at the house. Um, and they were just renting there. Yes, they just they were just renting there. So that's all over Twitter as well. If you want to go look at it yourself, let's quickly look here. Michael Vaughan search continues. Um, this was at 1247, so just a few minutes ago. The search is continuing Sunday in the backyard of a house in Fruitland for possible remains of now six-year-old Michael Vaughan, who went missing from his neighborhood July in July of 2021. Crews have dug up most of the backyard and placed top layers of dirt in dumpsters. Fruitland Police Chief J.D. Huff says that their intent is to dig three or four feet deep and that they will not stop until in the entire backyard is excavated. A backhoe is being used to dig up the topsoil, and Huff believes it will in no way contaminate evidence if there is any. Huff said there are multiple layers of dirt to scrape away, and the search will continue tomorrow if needed. During the course of the investigation, we received information. The remains of Michael Vaughan might be found behind the house. As a result, we obtained a search warrant. We've not found anything yet, but we will continue to excavate in hopes of finding his remains. Chief Huff told KTVB at the scene on Saturday. He said the couple that lives in the home do not own it and, to his knowledge, have no connection to the Vaughan family. Two canine dogs were also brought in. Huff said he has no updates on the dogs at this time. The house on Red Wing Street is around... Four minutes from Michael Vaughan's home. The neighborhood is diagonal from his home across a farm field. The residents that live next door are being cooperative. Have So they say here, um, the lead came from a very credible tip, have said, and police obtained a search warrant and began working late Friday night. Crews in the search involve Idaho State Police, Fruitland Police, Idaho Mountain Search and Rescue, uh, Fruitland Public Works, and the Fruitland Fire Department. At a press conference in the summer, have previously said a lead had placed investigators back in the Fruitland area to look for Michael Vaughan. Michael, who is nicknamed Monkey, was last seen around 6.30 p.m. on July 27, 2021, while well, they said the time that he disappeared would be yeah between 6... 40 and 7 p.m. on that day in the area of Southwest 9th Street in Fruitland. At the time, he was five years old and described as three feet, seven inches tall, weighing about 50 pounds with blonde hair and blue eyes. Michael's sixth birthday was June 24th, 2022. In a previous news conference, July 22nd, Fruitland police confirmed preliminary evidence that suggests that Michael's disappearance is criminal and possibly an abduction. Already, the department has looked into nearly 1,000 leads and tips that have come in from the public. So have told KTVB there will be more updates throughout the day, the next one at 1 p.m. So that is why we go hashtag Michael Vaughan and we look at the latest updates. Let's see if anything has been said here. Okay. Here they say, I waited to hear the slew of apologies to Brandy and Tyler. Mm-hmm. Digging. Okay. So we're looking there. Chen, those pictures are so cute. Brandy, Neil, and Tyler Vaughan have asked that everyone respect their privacy during this time. They are not suspects and have absolutely nothing to do with this. We are not entitled to any additional information. All right, so what is it? What is happening here? We've got that. The video update. I can't see anything else. Top, anything in the top? Go, go, go. Okay. I'm just looking. Where's the news? What's happening? Tell us. Oh. I just got off the phone with Brandy Neal, Monkey's mom. She tells me they are still digging in the backyard. That is a four-minute walk from her home. She doesn't know the people who live there. Law enforcement just visited and told her not to go over there. It's difficult not to, she tells me. Wow. Man. Okay, so let's just quickly have a look um, at that profile I was looking at earlier. Alexandra? Let's go here. Home. Find... Alexandra, Alexandra, Duggan, there you go, Duggan, 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 video update, now when was this, this was 52 minutes ago, I don't see anything new, do you guys see anything new, we're just waiting here to see if there's anything new, here, let's quickly look here, um, 
nothing there. Okay, so what I want to show you is this website, findmichaelvaughn.com, which Neville's True Crime created. But here under Little Monkey, you could see um, things that he liked. Remember his mom said that um, they went camping and um, he, he caught lots of frogs that day. So Denise, they didn't say news presser, did they? They said they're going to update the media at that time. So I'm not sure if there's a presser, but uh, it's already 10 past that. Um, so if you guys see anything, let me know. Send me an email or something. Let me just check my messages as well. But here you can see um, what he likes to do. Uh, just hold on one second. Oh. Just hold on. I'm going to look. But he likes to dig in the dirt. Rock hounding, metal detecting, playing Minecraft with a family, loves to build things. So, yes. Shame. From Michael Monkey Vaughn. Now, let's go look here. KTV, KTV B News. Oh. <laughs> I'm just looking on YouTube as well. Maria, thank you for joining. Thank you, everyone. If I missed anyone, I'm so sorry. I'm just looking if KTVB has any news, anything live. Let's see. No, nothing. Yeah, he looks a lot like his mama. So that's uh, his activities. They say monkeys, toys, monster trucks, hot wheels, power wheels, anything with wheels. <laughs> Excavator and construction vehicles and Legos, of course. Movies, The Mandalorian, Spider-Man and Batman books, Harold and the Purple Crayon, Legos books, I Love You More, places, going to the park, sliding, swinging as high as you can, so high, Oregon coast visit, seeing the beach for the first time and camping all over, and food, pizza, mac and cheese, zebra cakes, and chop, uh, chocolate chip cookies. I've seen zebra cakes here, actually, in the Netherlands. I should try them one day. He's a Seahawks fan as well. So that's just a little bit about him. And then on this website as well, you can see um, photos. Ah, oh, shame. Look at this photo. Wow. So this is, um, Elizabeth Smart said, Today I want to say to all, to those still searching, you'll always remain in my prayers, and I refuse to lose hope that your loved ones will be found. And to those still missing, don't give up. Miracles happen. You deserve to be found, rescued, and to have happiness. And to finally, to those who are struggling along the way, no matter what point you find yourself, don't give up. You never deserve to be hurt. You deserve to be believed, supported, loved, and happy. Everyone has a story and challenges. You are not alone. God bless all of you from Elizabeth Smart. So, yes, there's also pictures over here. Never give up. Shame. Five years old at the time of his disappearance. He would be six years old now. Yeah, he loved little animals, says Elizabeth uh, K. He loved little animals. He was very curious. <laughs> and Kathleen's like, Elizabeth Smart. Yes. Yeah, such a beautiful little boy. So yeah, you can see all the, the community has really um, been strong and come together and helped the family, you know, to search for him. There's flyers that have been posted. The family's been so strong through all of this. They've been viciously attacked online, which we see in every case, I suppose, but it's never easy. So you can see these uh, bracelets with a tip line and everything. There's been um, billboards. Everything everywhere. So this uh, Neville's True Crime, another YouTube content creator, uh, created this website. So credit to him for creating this. If you want to go see all these photos, you can go check it out there. It's findmichaelvaughn.com. And he's got the flyers and everything on here as well. Yes, Denise says, community strong for the sweet little boy, right? So now I'm just quickly going to go back to this and search the latest. And if there's nothing else really new here, let's see. IS ISP PIO told us he's going to remind the chief to come talk to us, but that the update will likely come at 4 to 5 p.m. Damn, you see, they're busy digging. So 4 to 5 p.m. is very different to 1 p.m., which means it's actually only in three hours, three to four hours from now. So quarter past nine, 10, 11, 12, one. <laughs> so between one in the morning and two in the morning for me, there might be an update. 
if I'm awake at that time, which I really shouldn't be, but if I am, and there's a huge update, you'll know I'll be here, or I'll be here in the morning, I guess, uh, and making videos for you guys. So yeah. Lisa says, I have a feeling they found him. Oh man, that's such a sad feeling, right? Yes, Ken Dalton, Neville is great, he's from Ireland too. Yes, he is. Yeah, and uh, Sandy Floyd says, don't think it's a presser, the reporter's waiting for the officer to give an update. Exactly. They didn't say that there will be a presser, they're just going to update the news channels, uh, the reporters that are out there. So that's, yeah, that's what I can see right now. So that's the only update we have so far. That's it for now. So update around 4 to 5 p.m., they say. Yep. So, yeah, we got to just be patient. Thank you so much uh, for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everyone who became members. We will have a PJ party very soon. <laughs> I know you guys like that a lot. So we'll have that. And make sure you check the community tab because that's normally – because I share the link for patrons and YouTube members to join those live streams together, uh, generally I share it on the community tab. So you got to check there and click on it at the time. But you should get notifications if it's a members-only stream. Sometimes I do that. So you get your notification. Then I'd make it uh, so that the patrons can join. So, yes. Um, exploited Innocence, I don't think they've stopped digging. They are still digging. From what I understand and from everything I can see on all these frigging screens I've got around me, um, it looks like they're still digging. And I guess that's also why there would be a delay in the update. They're still in it. They're busy working now. Thank you, Stefan. You say excellent live stream. Thank you, Marge. That was majorly overtime, major overtime today. Um, and thank you, everyone who supports the channel. I really appreciate it. Whether you're watching, uh, if you're watching, um, please make sure you like and share the video. That helps so much. Uh, so thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing, for chatting here with us, for keeping the the chat grizzly. Sorry about all the trolls that rolled in today. This case is one of those. You know, it's <laughs> it's one of those cases where you kind of expect like, all right, everybody be prepared. We need that wrench army to be ready because they could be trolls and they, they were today. And if I missed anyone's super sticker, I'm so, so sorry. I do always check them afterwards and I'm very, very grateful. Just know that I really feel very grateful for every single subscriber, supporter, member and patron, buy me a coffee supporter, PayPal, all that stuff. If you want to support me or grab yourself some Grizzly notebooks or merch, Anything like that, all the links on grizzlytruecrime.com. Now I'm going to play my outro. I'm going to rest my voice a little bit. I'll be monitoring this for updates. Thank you so much for getting all caught up with me on this case. I think now we're all on the same page, right? We know what's going on. We know about this case. We've had a good refresher or a good introduction. And now I'll keep you updated as we go forward. And I'm sure Neville's True Crime will join us here um, soon as well on this case. So look forward to that as well. Thank you, Denise. That's so sweet. Yeah, wrench army. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, and uh, stay safe, and I'll keep you posted. Follow me on Twitter for the latest updates, and then Patreon is the second place for the latest updates, okay? <laughs> Patreon, behind the scenes, okay? Twitter, very busy. I'm very busy on there. <laughs> okay, bye, everyone. <laughs>